mollusks. Yes. <laughs> Passed my mollicology test. Passed it. Malacology. It's fun to say that. Fun to say. It's a good word. What is this? Do you right say it like here, Sean Connery? Malacology. Probably the same There's thing as the other. There's two more yeah. here. Some sort of uh, urchin? An enemy, or, I think. Uh, crinoid? Uh, an enemy, probably. Or I want to think a uh, stalked an enemy, like we just sampled. Ooh, yeah. yeah I think so. you're probably going to be right, because actually in our guidebook, those are in a pile of sediment. Video zoom? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I think you guys are right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come wide, I've gotta go. Ah, hey Steve. He says, uh, Serianthids. Yep, Raj. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Right, you want to come forward on Argus there, please? Sure. Thank you. So how many things have we gotten off of uh, Chris's wish list? Seems I like we've managed to get a lot of those. Off earlier we've been like writing the dive number next to the ones we got we have let's see um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve Nine, ten. We've been putting in work. Eleven. Yeah. Uh, Kylie, you want to get out a little in front there? I think we've gotten yeah. ten or eleven of the things on his wish list. That's a lot. That's uh. pretty good. So one thing you can see with some of these lava flows is they they kind of they they look like they have a kind of wide spot and then they narrow down, get wide again, narrow down. That's uh, those uh, wider areas, those kind of bulbous uh, portions of the flow would be where uh, things kind of froze for a little bit and then it split open and kind of uh, had a little bit of a narrow neck and then uh, kind of formed another bubble or pillow again. So you can kind of see how that, uh, this sort of pulsing and placement. So that's, that's an example of one right here. Beautiful. And it goes, uh, these pillow basalts go through this, this kind of emplacement process of uh, flow, freeze, pressure builds up behind it, lava breaks out, freezes again, rinse, repeat. Raj. That's okay. Get more of those uh, tube anemones yeah, showing up. Yeah, they seem to take advantage of these little sediment areas. You want to do the side of the ridge again? Yeah. That's what they were doing earlier, so I think that's a good idea. Yeah, Dwight was saying it was a little boring on top of the ridges. Yeah. So you, do you guys want us to change our orientation? Um. 
I think we should keep our heading pass over waypoint six and then uh, maintain the heading that we're on so we kind of sit on the side of the ridge for a while. Okay, true thing. Okay. There might be more to look at that would make more than just be happy. Yeah, Asako, I think you're right. Um, those yellow bolosomas, these uh, yellow sponges with these uh, bright yellow stalks. This is uh, the first time we've seen those on, and we've seen we've seen a few of them. Mm. Handful. Oh, that was a colophagus. We haven't really seen much colophagus. We have a question from an author who's writing a book about the deep sea. Ooh. Hmm. Would it be acceptable, given your collective experience, to accept a fiction where a deep ocean current of 18 to 20 knots is found at the base of a seamount? Um, mm. I don't know. It's mm. another shy coral, and it looks like it has a sea star. Hanging out on it, too. Oh, yeah. Is that one of those precious corals again? Yeah. Looks like it. 20 knots at the bottom is... That's a lot. That's yeah. yeah. That's a lot. I think things are a little bit more sluggish down here. Yeah, so this is an interesting pillow morphology here. You have, like, an outer rim that's a little bit cooler and heavily manganese-crusted, and it looks like this is some uh, uh, interior material. So it's also got some concentric joining, jointing going on, as well as some of these uh, vertical joints that you see, well, radial joints, excuse me. <clears throat> what speed are we going? Uh, almost point one of a knot. Watch. We set it to be 0.2 of a knot, but mainly it's 0.1. Okay. There's another one that looks like this one kind of ran out of oomph and it just kind of broke open and a little bit yeah. of lava drained out of the center and it just stopped there. Uh, Kylie, if you want to get a little ahead out, then we'll do a de we'll have to do another DVL reset on your position. Yeah. Scott, so there's a question about how many different lava flows are responsible for the current seamount that we're looking at. Mm. Mm. I don't have the first idea. Um, this was the, so the average lifetime of an ocean island uh, volcano. We think is somewhere on the order of around. Uh, Shall we continue moving? I think so. Yeah, yeah I think that's okay. Bridge. This is nav. Again, zero eight zero fifty meters. There's another one. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, and what is that on the left? That's so weird. Is that a sponge? Where? Oh, the Christmas tree looking thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this guy. The. 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 the not Victor Gorgia, the brain's not working now. Valteria? Valteria, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it just has like a weird shape. So yeah, mapping it, volcanic stratigraphy has its challenges, so I don't know the exact number of lava flows, especially with stuff that's so like interwoven is what we're seeing here. But um, yeah, the average lifetime, uh, we think of many of these uh, uh, interplate volcanoes is somewhere on the order of five million years, um, plus or minus a few, depending on uh, the setting. So, um, thousands, tens of thousands easily. Um, a bunch of different eruptions over the lifetime of the volcano that uh, builds up this platform. Can we do the DVL reset now? Quite a bit. 
okay. Do you want it in USBL? Uh, it'll still be the same cursor based. Cursor based? Yeah, so reset okay. source will be solution cursor. Uh, okay, so where are you somewhere here? So she's towards the forward USBL ping. Does it look like? It's yeah, she's what? probably up here. Yeah. And then, Over here? Yeah, and then you'll want the solution to be solution cursor. Ready for it? Yeah. Nice. Cool. Thanks, little one. Someone asked uh, what EV stood for with Nautilus. Exploration vessel. Exploration vessel. Yeah. Are there other prefixes that are used for ships like ours? Uh, yeah, the, so RV, the NOAA RV Okeanos would be the research vessel. RV. Yeah, it's usually RV. We're the only, only so ones who gave ourselves an EV. <laughs> yeah, are we the only, uh, only EV out? I'm pretty I'm sure. I I would imagine, yeah. That makes sense with yeah, how most there's research. a lot of archaeology uh, mm -hmm. done with this with this ship too, like shipwreck uh, location. <coughs> we get some cultural stuff. I mean, there's that that beautiful image of the uh, uh, pile of ceramics mm. uh, on the ship. Yeah. But yeah, for your author question, Steve wrote in that uh, even the Gulf Stream is only about five knots, so that 15 to 20 is way too high in nature. We also had a, another viewer said that you might get that in a, f a fjord or um, the San Juan Island area, oh, but yeah. not super deep. Yeah, basically where you get that channelization that helps concentrate everything, kind of that wind tunnel effect. Yeah, out here where things are more open, it tends to be broader and gentler. You have a gauge check. Yeah, sure. Another geology question no, for no, you, No, I mean for like the record. Yeah. <laughs> ah, come on, you gotta. Yeah, what do we got? Remember when you used to be one of us? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Go for it. Just looking at all the things. Question is: Do you get more violent eruptions underwater where water can enter the mantle, with hydrogen and oxygen separating to lead to explosive type forces impacting the speed of lava flows? Um, I don't think so. Um, to my knowledge, seawater doesn't uh, make it. Uh, down into the volcanic plumbing system and directly into the mantle, and uh, it, it you're it the the water atoms don't really split apart so much um, under those conditions either. Um, you can get some explosive activity depending on uh, the lava composition. Um, usually, a lot to do with like its volatile content. Um, but for the most part, underwater volcanism, submarine volcanism, uh, it tends to be in the form of lava flows, like the ones we're flying over right now. Um, the biggest explosions, kind of like the Hunga Tonga, Hunga Ha Pai, uh, explosion in January, that was an interesting case because, um, it did have a subaerial vent for a little while. And then there was some eruptive activity leading up to the big explosion that we all heard about. Um, so, and a number of people literally heard um, that uh, the vent was um, basically blown out and it was under, some, we think around 200 meters of water. And the water uh, and seawater did infiltrate that uh, magmatic system, but that's still in the crust, not in the mantle. So uh, when you get seawater and uh, magma interacting like that, that's where things get explosive. And that, we think, is a huge reason why we had um, such a violent explosion from that volcano. It's a very unusual case. And uh, it's actually giving us um, some perspectives on uh, things like Krakatoa 1883, uh, which was another one of these gigantic volcanic explosions that people h heard thousands and thousands of miles away, too. So um, you're not, you're not as 
likely to see something like that this deep down, um, not with that kind of violence. Um, but we do have other cases, like in some of the other Tongan volcanoes, uh, where you can have uh, deep submarine caldera collapses, and those actually produce um, pumice, even at depth, which is remarkable. And you get this pumice that gets ejected. Uh, it, it's buoyant, so it ends up moving up and forms these pumice rafts that we can see above the volcano. That's sometimes how you spot it. What's the gas? that's getting trapped in the pumice mm. or forming the bubbles in the pumice in the deep sea? Probably water vapor, uh, CO2, maybe some uh, sulfur gases, uh, in some cases like tiny, tiny, you tiny, tiny iris, fluorine. Please? Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably forgetting something in there. Uh, but, um, Yeah, the, the most dangerous, like, violent explos explosions are either really, actually, yeah, they're, they're just uh, either really large uh, terrestrial volcanic eruptions, kind of like Pinatubo or Toba, um, or you get ones that are... The next move will be 060. 060, roger. Yeah, and, uh, stuff that is like, uh, you know... Bridge, this is NAV. Zero six zero fifty meters. Affirm. Yeah, so like you have really explosive uh, magma or whatever in a uh, terrestrial chamber. Sometimes, uh, like uh, with the Honga Tonga thing, um, magma water interactions. Down here, there's enough hydrostatic pressure that the explosive activity that we do see is not going to be as extensive. What this, is this waving? The atmosphere. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. It's like doing double dutch. <laughs> yeah. What? Looks like one of those um, Korok flowers from uh, Breath of the Wild. The ones zoom? that you chase around. Zoom for you. Thank you. I'm trying to remember the name of this volcano. Very cool. Come on. Oops. Hi, hi. Oh, if you can look at that whip coral just on the right. Sure. You don't want to see that crinoid flying around? Me either. <laughs> Sokka so wanted to take a quick look. Wee. So cool. Okay, video zoom. Bamboo. Yeah. Squat lobster? Shrimp? Yeah, squat lobster. squatty. Yeah. Teeny little squat lobster. All right, is that swimming crinoid still around? Okay, come wide, I gotta go. Thank you. An enemy. Yeah, they've been all over the place. So back to our author's question, what would an upper limit for a current's velocity, uh, <laughs> velocity be? I think they, uh, there's some good papers out there on like deep sea currents and stuff. There's probably a lot of interesting work coming out of Ocean Networks Canada that could be a good resource for them. Mm -hmm. um, Steve suggested a little while ago that uh, the Gulf Stream does only about five knots, and okay. that's probably one of your more uh, extreme examples. Yeah, so um, I, I had to remind myself of the name, but uh, one example of uh, like sub kind of fairly deep submarine um, caldera collapse that produced uh, a uh, pumice raft that later uh, floated for a while is Havre Volcano, H-A-V-R-E, over in the uh, uh, the Tongan system. And that was a massive, fairly silicic uh, eruption that occurred at depth. Um, that's probably one of your better examples of a uh, deep explosive style eruption. Um, one of my office mates uh, during my PhD worked on Havre. 
think he got to work on a bunch of those deposits after partial uh, zoom. Somebody, uh, somebody, uh, a passenger in a plane uh, flying over that area um, a little took tighter. pictures of a pumice That's raft good. and was like, and asked around, you know, to some scientists, "What's this?" And they're like, okay. "Oh my gosh, we need to go back and look Beautiful. at the satellite Come data." And sure enough, they found a pumice raft in the satellite data from around that time. And they're like. There's, there's this underwater volcano that we didn't really know anything about. And uh, so they went out and collected uh, some multi-beam and collected some pumice. And that became a big part that? of oh, my fish? first dissertation. Think, yeah. Good eye no. right there. Oh, yeah. We got a fish. Looks fairly large. What? Is that like one of the ones we saw yesterday? I'm seeing a uh, vertical fin. But he's also got spots. Uh, videos, um, zoom. So that's my cue to stop talking about volcanoes. <laughs> Is it a fish? No, that's not <laughs> what we saw yesterday. Looks like yeah. Are those barnacles? I would assume that they're so worms or something. Okay. Okay, he doesn't want to be looked at. Um, come He's on. shy. So probably the Macroidae of some sort. Yeah, big fish. Are you feeling a current right now? Me? Yeah. Uh, not as much as yesterday, no. I gotta go. So yeah, Sako, um, yeah. Ryan on the previous shift yep. uh, was noting that he didn't see this kind of distribution of, uh, he's not familiar with this distribution of cup corals kind of how um, evenly distributed they are when they show up. So is it more normal for those to cluster? Well, there's another comment that came in about uh, the yeah, Santorini. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good, volcano. this is like a good uh, heading here. Do you so know like about that? You're a little bit away. Um, pieces. Yeah, so it's like you can go forward and crab to the side at the same time. So like the vector of the of the joystick is gonna be like a, not full head and not full to lateral. And then yeah, so that way because like you're right, the laterals are a little bit weaker. So um, I think this heading right now, you still get good visual contact with the seafloor and you get some drop off. I think this is a good heading. What's the What's the question? They said that. Um there was yeah. an interaction of seawater and magma, and given yeah. the depth yeah. of the if caldera, it, it tilted a, the plate yeah. under the Aegean, <laughs> so that now you can actually snorkel over Bronze Age streets because of the way the plate tilted. Um, oh, you mean just like the caldera floor? I think so. Yeah, um, that that means that yeah, there there was a during some eruption of Santorini, uh, there was enough deflation in the system uh, over the course of the eruption. Basically enough uh, magma was moved out that um, that would have caused uh, some of the caldera floor to collapse. Um, kind of probably not unlike what we saw with uh, Kilauea in 2018. That was remarkable to watch happen in real time. Like, it, it yeah, that was amazing. And kind of frightening. Not not in like a doom and gloom kind of way, it's just watching something of that magnitude happening uh, in real time with like webcams. It's it's big, you know? Yeah, it ended up dis displacing 800 and something people too from that area. Yeah. Right, can you put the control van view up? Somebody wanted to see what it looks like in here? Sure thing. Uh, it's a question about how many pilots operate our ROV. Well, we've currently got two ROVs running, and then we have a pilot for each. 
we also have interns that um, sometimes are working in those roles. Yep, and then we have a navigator who uh, yep. helps coordinate uh, ship and ROV moves. Shall, keep, shall we keep moving towards waypoint seven? Um, yeah, can we keep the heading, what was the previous heading, around 80, 080? So, we, yeah, last one was 60. And okay. if we are going to seven, I would suggest to go 40. So okay. we'll proceed at this I, direction. I think we want to stay along this contour. Okay. Did Is you that want, what you were did you want to duck down and uh, go up to the you. side of the ridge? I, I think we should you, go you want back to, to the side. To go the same contour, like uh, this way. I think whichever one looks steeper, maybe. Or would we uh, like to go crossing them? Slightly steeper to the north side of the ridge. So along the contour toward the north side of the ridge. So like yeah. the, like this, right? Yeah. Let's try that vector. Okay. See if we start seeing uh, some communities on that side. Wait, why is Global Volcanism program down? Could be our internet. Okay. That's weird. So we'll be moving 030. 030, zero zero. Zero Roger. Yeah, 030. Zero zero. Sounds good. We'll keep assessing it as long as we go. Hey, good morning, Chris. Got the whole team on now. Approach, this yeah. is now. Zero three zero fifty meters. It's so like in this configuration along contour, you'll probably do the forty five because we'll forty. You'll do a lot more laterals for that instead of like full. So, hold on. I'm going to do a quick shout out to my family. I think they finally managed to get the control van. So, <laughs> hi, hello, Oma. Hello, Mama and Faye. Ich hab euch lieb. Frohe Ostern. Ich wünsche, dass ich bei euch sein konnte. So, we are. Oh, it's working on my computer. We're about, uh, what is that, Ten, 11 and a half hours into our 22 hour planned dive on a solar day seamount. I've been uh, calling it Solide. Oh, Solide? Well, I'm not saying it's I'm right. I just apparently didn't realize. Solar day, right? So, hey. Oh, Raj. Uh, I, I mean, so that sounds that more When I read the dive plan, I said to lead. <laughs> <laughs> the world's just saying our own thing. Yeah. It's a seamount, and we're here. So maybe <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. And, yeah. Tell it like it is. Yeah. Oh, we so we're pick. at about 1,540 meters <laughs> in depth. What is that? Uh, Whoa. Is Whoa. that? What? Is that, that is a bamboo? Or wood insane. coral? Insane. Okay, that's even bigger than the one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is a bamboo. See. Look yeah. at that. Okay, Whoa. where's the star? That used to be so <laughs> tall yeah. before it broke off. What do you think? Any guesses? How old or how tall? How tall? Oh my gosh! I mean, like Lots three meters, two yeah. and a half meters, easily. Looks like each section is like ten centimeters. Oh, there's yeah. still a few polyps up top. And yeah. a couple of brittle stars. Partial. That's good. A little bit tighter, just a little bit. That's good. I mean, let's zoom in on those dead polyps. Give it to me. <laughs> hey, Solomon, would you mind squaring up again on Oops. the rav nav screen? Uh. Hey, Solomon? Yes? Would you mind squaring up on the rav nav screen again, okay. please? Okay. Thank you. Come if wide. I, Come if wide I'm reading the me. rocks correctly. Yeah, you nice zoom out. Thank you. The higher we're going, we're starting to see a little bit more botryoidal texture, Oops. actually. Rock so. Church. Yeah. I imagine Beth is going to be interested in getting a third sample late. <laughs> so we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. This is more botryoidal, you're saying? I'm starting to see a little bit more. If I'm if if I'm reading the geology the right way, I'm maybe that'll keep getting zero better zero. as we go up. Roger. Yeah, they'll be on in 30 minutes. So. Yeah. 
Lila, you got a happy Easter from Austria. Oh, yay! <laughs> Lila, do you have family in Austria? Is that? Yeah, my mom and sister are there with my grandma right now, and they, all three of them, just tuned in. What time oh, is awesome. it there? It is tea time on Easter Sunday. <laughs> there right. you go. Very cool. Yeah. We had a question about why Argus has been switched out for Atalanta. Um, at the beginning of our most recent cruise, we found that there are some maintenance issues with Argus that uh, we decided not to dive into because we had a very functional backup in Atalanta, which is the one that we're using now. Plan is for Argus to get back in service when we're able to address those issues. Question about how often we discover new fish species on our dives. Ooh, that's tough to say. I feel like we don't usually have like passionate fish biologists in the house in the van, but there are a lot of people who will tune in and help us ID fish. We don't usually collect fish. Mm -mm. We just get video footage of them. Exactly. Sometimes we take inadvertent collections of fish by the fact that they get lodged in the vehicle. <laughs> Maybe that's... <laughs> <laughs> so that's not funny. <laughs> Especially really small ones at the surface. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll put them back in the water so that, yeah. you know, at least they can be eaten. <laughs> Even the stuff in the in the bio boxes that like Oops. fall off of an actual yeah. sample, like biology that might fall off of a rock that you, that you're not actually interested in collecting, just puts it back in the water. Chris, we think we're up to to ten on your list. Walteria. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Can I get a zoom? Is it? Yeah. Like, good. Little. Look at you. Nicely done. Oh my gosh! I'm becoming a. Is this is a sponge. Sponge, sponge, sponge. geologist. Sponge geologist. <laughs> Peripherologist. So so yeah. Peripherologist, that's the name for it? Come on. I Thank don't you. know, but it it's phylum periphera, it so sure. Cool. Oh, you were up early, Chris. No, yeah, we're up late. So I shouldn't say anything. I know this handoff <laughs> is always the weirdest because we're like, good night. And the watch coming on is like, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's all perspective. <laughs> we should just abbreviate it to good. Oh, good. 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 Good Raj. Good, good Raj. Raj to you. <laughs> oh, did we lose video what? going out? Mm. Asako says no, um, still no data. Okay. Uh, um. Oh, okay. It's back. We okay, must have good. burped. The internet burps sometimes. It, it it does that. We also got a, I'd like to say hi to my daughter Val and happy Easter oh. to everyone on Nautilus. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hello. Nice. Hi, Val's mom. Hi, <laughs> Val's mom. Hello, Val's mom. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that one of the, that almost looks like, you know what it looks like? The thing? The, the Antamoramoridae, whatever. No, no, no. Other way around. Mora, Mora Deantamora. Isopod parasites on that fish. Okay. Next would be going 025. 025, Raj. Roger. Corphanoids. At first I thought they were like camouflage Bridge, spots. Mapped. Question about who gets the fun Zero job of five, dealing. 50 meters. Fun job of dealing. Dealing with the samples, including the slime star we got in 
this round. Mm, that was me. That's that was me, my right. job. I get to do that. My uh, uh, roommate, Shelby, who is on, uh, she's in SCF on, is it the next watch? On the next watch, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, was telling me that earlier on their first watch, they collected a purple anemone. She was like, good luck with that. That one's really slimy. And there are like <laughs> lots of sections of it. So yeah, things come up and my team and I have to decide how to handle them. Yep, I just work on the less slimy things. <laughs> it's probably for the better. There, there are people we much just, better at handling the slimy things than uh, handling the slimy things than I am. We just make a nice mess with the rock saw. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta scrub that corner of the lab pretty soon. I've been <laughs> tracking manganese everywhere, and that's just not gonna, that doesn't fly. So, I, I think tomorrow, tomorrow for us, um, after a little bit of sleep, it'll be uh, time to swap down the lab a little bit. Yeah, it's not tomorrow until we go to bed and wake back up. Correct. It's cool to be able to see the inside of these rocks like a day later though. Yeah. Yeah, we cut a bunch open today and we're having some fun with that. Uh, some of them had a few surprises for us. Val's a pro. Yeah, I've been cutting rocks for, I don't know how many years now. A lot, <laughs> since I was an undergrad. Makes the rock cutting no less concerning to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I still I'm take it shit. very seriously. I, I know you do. Video zoom? Yeah. Because, you know, we're out at sea. Um, even a little problem can quickly become a big problem if you're not careful. So yeah. it's, it's always good to be on top watch. of the safety thing and just yeah. take your time take with stuff more. that is risky. Can't imagine using that saw in rough Oops, seas. I don't want it. I lied. <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Just picked you out there, <laughs> April Fools. I had a lot of practice with the uh, Two Blues expedition uh, uh, sawing and uh, rollers. <laughs> you, you move with the rock saw, and that's how you keep everything super steady. Chris was asking what you thought about the rocks. Any good dating yeah. rocks? Um, some of them are. Some of them are a little cooked, and I'm not sure if they're. Uh, the rocks are cooked. Yeah, cooked. Just cooked all the way through. Yep. What does that mean? Well done. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just being super uh, jargony. Yeah, but jargony, what are your man talking about? Very slangy. Um, just a lot of hydrothermal alteration, a lot of well, hydrothermal on a couple of them, a lot of seawater alteration, because some of the uh, basalts on the last couple of dives have come back with uh, uh, fairly significant interior cracking, like fracturing. And that happens sometimes. Uh -huh. You know, it's just you know, whatever the eruptive conditions were, and you don't know till you uh, take a take a big fat look inside the rock. So some of them look good. Some of them uh, I'm just gonna send over to the archive. Uh, this is right we here. Video zoom. Mess with them later. Yeah. Another little Walteria. Another yeah. Walteria. There's something. I don't know. That looked like a purple purple yeah. polyp, purple octocoral kind of thing. Hmm. On the right. O over on the right. Oh, behind it? Uh, like no, Victoria. it's like there's far to the right. There's something purple behind it, though. You're right, there's something purple behind that, too. Yeah. 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 There's another Can something come to the right. I'm going to um, move forward, there. but also see, right see if I Looks can. Looks like Victoria yeah. behind it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you're right. That's probably see, it? see it in the bubble cam. Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'll just keep going. Yeah. So, Val, there's a question about, uh, do you post pictures of the rocks after you cut them? Um, for right now, most of those photos are being uploaded to the uh, local ships network, um, so we can get those uh, organized and archived. Uh, I've put a couple up on the uh, uh, the chat that we have with uh, our onshore team, but I'm also trying not to just spam a bunch of pictures in because that does, uh, that does chew up a uh, little bit of bandwidth, and I just don't want to overtax things. So, you yes can take no. over the Nautilus Live uh, yeah. Instagram. You should. You should do and that. Put take the rocks over on the Instagram there. for a day. <laughs> I was gonna say, about actually, like I sent um, Megan some pictures of you holding the rocks and looking like a very happy geologist. So those might go up at some point. Either way, was I wearing my manganese crust? 
<laughs> oh, uh, on your <laughs> no, face? It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just a natural consequence of your battle uh, sawing. paint. Yeah, yeah no, was, probably. Anytime Here, I'm on I'll the show saw, you the I am accumulating a manganese crust faster than these rocks do. Yeah. I just wash it off. Mm -hmm. It's true that. Uh, anyway, yeah, you should totally take over the Instagram for a whole day. <laughs> I'd have to Bless remember uh, to post things. <laughs> but yeah, that might be doable. Look at, 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 look Happy. Look, it looks so legit. Very serious. Yeah, serious business, man. Serious business. Running things through a saw blade on a moving ship. <laughs> what you need is to take over the Instagram for a day and be like, uh, Annabelle, follow me around and film. And she will do <laughs> she it. She would be yeah. all about that, wouldn't she? She can show yeah. you all the Instagram she, She's tricks. got that whole TikTok thing going at the moment. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not on TikTok, and I don't really plan to be, but it seems to be a really interesting phenomenon. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Phenomena is a good word for it. <laughs> what are those? Oh, oh, I got a few knocked sponges. over sponges. Dead sponge. Yeah. They're not looking too uh, healthy. Lively. <laughs> 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 Annotation is just dwindling. <laughs> <laughs> like some interesting sponges. <laughs> oh no! I think we're getting into giggle fest. <laughs> yeah, it's the fifteen it's, it's minute countdown. It's getting time for bed. <laughs> the yeah. final countdown. Ten minute countdown. Not even fifteen, guys. I hope they. Yeah, oh, they well, better be here. Yeah, early. Early. <laughs> <laughs> Rise and shine. Yeah, seriously, I'm tired. <laughs> We have got a great dive ahead for you. Just not Tons for the rest of us going, going to bed. <laughs> yeah. We are sleepy. Zoom some a little bit about for me. Ocean mapping. Mm. And, um, I like those. So at this point, uh, we've got about 20% of our oceans mapped. Oh, uh, I think less than seven. No, is it? No, I thought I thought it went from okay. like. Wide. That would be 20. very I impressive, so. maybe. I, I think within U.S. waters, yeah, I've heard that number. Within U.S. waters, EEZ, maybe, yeah. There's a, a goal that's been set to try to map the whole ocean by 2030. Um, I think that's pretty ambitious, but very we'll ambitious. see how that goes. It would, I think one of the new subsets of that goal is to map the EEZ oh, by 2030. Yeah. So maybe we can do that. Yeah, that whole decade of oceans um, program. Yeah. Yeah. UN Ocean Decade. I think Keep that's moving. pretty cool. Bridge, this is nav. Another 0 to 5, 50 meters. Some of the seamounts that we've explored, uh, we mapped either last season or in some cases just the day before we went down to them mm -hmm. uh, over the last week. Yeah, we had to get a little creative with some of our dive sites with the weather doing what it was doing. Still kind of barren on this side so far. Yeah, we're still sort of, we just kind of have crawled around to the other side of this little ridge. Yeah. I imagine it will make them pretty slow headway. I guess for future reference, um, if we see a bunch of kind of barren terrain like this, would you guys be more comfortable with uh, pushing it up a bit in speed, or would you rather keep this pace? Mm, let's keep this pace. Okay, Raj. Uh, just so we don't run out of track too early. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. That would be easier for the annotation too. <laughs> Raj. I don't think it's bad, though, to poke around on sides. Yeah, because you never know what you'll yeah. find. Right. Hey, I'm fine with looking at rocks at this pace. I don't know about the rest of you. I <laughs> like it. <laughs> Shall Very we stop? soothing. Shall we stop? No, I, no. but they're going to nah. keep going. No. no. They don't want to rock. They're just, Val's just appreciating the rocks. <laughs> I appreciate looking at them. the rocks. <laughs> I do, too, because I like it if it's, like... Like I can bump into them and then not feel anything. 
<laughs> yeah, because usually when you bump into them, they do hurt. <laughs> Speaking from experience. <laughs> I won't feel anything through Hercules. True. From here. Hercules is built for this. I have a question about whether there are any other uh, exploring organizations that live stream the way we do. Yes. There are. So uh, the Okeanos also live streams dives like this when they're out and about. And uh, uh, Schmidt Ocean Institute uh, does uh, a lot of streaming uh, when we're aboard the Falcor. A good place to check is to go to deepoceaneducation.org. And that's actually a collaboration. It's, got a, uh, it's set up for teachers or people interested in kind of learning more about deep ocean exploration in general but it also if you scroll to the bottom of that home page of it it, um, it shows you what each of those organization ships are doing at any given moment and then you could click to into their websites to see more what's the sponge up from this roger the one in the, in the atalanta yeah i think it might be the same different wow does that look slightly fuzzy or is that just me it does look a little fuzzy it does have some fuzz to it like some mat or something, spin, 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 jewels, spicules, <laughs> dirt in it, spicules. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Inexplicable spicules. Can I? Get Bad hair day. Right. Can I get to zoom? Oh, I thought that was the hat beard. <laughs> <laughs> you can go in a little tighter. See if we can get some detail. That's good. Oh, I see a little squat lobster. Tiny cup coral. Yeah. Just a ordinary glass sponge, or what do you think? Yeah, it, I don't know if those are arborescent forams on the outside or what. Can you focus? Yeah, there you go, on the outside. Oh, um, wait, Chris is saying zoom and possible collection. We are yeah, zoomed. sure. We Maybe let's Roger, come on. for a sec. You want to stop the ship there, please, woman? Okay. I'll park. Bridge, this is nav. Hold position, please. How, how confirmed are we on this possible collection? Not confirmed. Well, we can get set up for it because we're going to do watch change soon. This anyway. is very different from ones that Chris has seen, so I'm going to say let's collect let's it. Let's collect it. Okay. Oh, I like um, the decisiveness. Bio sampling. And honestly, I feel like the sponge slurp has been a little iffy. Maybe a small grab. Small grab, not sponge slurp. Yeah, they get very Can I torn see the porch, up. Please, uh, Raj, is there a box that you guys want to? Um, it could go in with one of the rocks. Yeah, that um, should be fine. An A, maybe. Raj, we have a bit of layback, so I wonder if we're going to swing. So maybe we'll just do this really quickly. Okay. Okay. Or attract nice. the camera here. Yeah, A sounds like a good idea. Um, just in case this one's a floater. Roger that. A, 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 A. Where a. is A? Is that the one, the aft, the aftmost one, or the uh, forward? forward. Is Roger that, that difficult? No. Oh, oh no, that's fine. Okay. Just seeing what we got. We're working with. Um. Chris says, break off a piece all the way through the side, from the outside to the inside. Sure thing. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Thanks. Yeah, we're still swinging. All right, come a little Is wide, this please. Is this a Uplectelid, Chris? Still waiting on comms. Got comms. Good force to one. And for force to two. Good. I'm gonna tilt down a little bit there. So I'm gonna get this guy here on that side. Yeah, Is that okay? I think that looks good. All right. Can you open the iris a little bit? That's good. Yeah, okay, a big chunk of this guy. So let's go here. Got a rock? I oh, got it.
That look okay, Chris. I think he's gonna be a bit delayed. Yeah. Get a better grip on it. Alright, so Alright, you wanna push on in there a bit please? It's great. He was saying wow. it could possibly be a Rosalid as well, Leela. Got it. Pull okay, it, cool. please. Uh, we got the Chris seal of approval. All right. Go starboard A. Starboard yes, A. Yes, please. Raj. Thanks, Kylie. You're welcome. Switching to sample. Yeah, nice grab. Switching to sample. Right. So we have floaty things, right? Floaty yeah. things. An F. F. Yep. Okay. All well. right, go ahead and pop it out there, Kylie. Morning. All right, we are starting to gear up for a uh, shift change here, so you'll start hearing uh, the four to eight voices roll in. There was a question in the chat about whether we're still doing a Hawaiian ritual at the beginning of each watch. Um, we have a new cultural liaison on board for this cruise and we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, we do a protocol before each dive begins. Kay. Nice. Hoping that it doesn't get on my fingers. So we will be switching Looks over like our free. watch now. Beautiful, coming in. Yeah, Very nice. That. Go ahead. Dive okay. salvo. All right. Chris well, says nice that those projections that. are spicules and are part of the sponge, although there was also a forum. So sounds like he's looking forward to looking at the at this one in more detail. Indeed. Okay. That was 076. You already got it. Perfect. All right, well, wishing everyone a good rest of your day. We're switching out. Yep, time Ooh. for uh, time That's to not what you want. Four to go to bed. Seriously, yeah. Yep. Securing power to the craft and changing the cameras. Yeah, worries. Thank you. Do you want to you wanna push out ahead there, little Kylie, for, for yeah. Trevor? Yeah. Yeah, just doing awesome. No. Can you tilt that? Oh, Raj. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Raj, I like it. Okay. I'm happy. I want to go. <laughs>
All right, good morning, everyone. Four to eight watch is switching over, so just give us a few minutes to get settled, and we will continue to explore. Hey, Lynette, can you tell me what we're doing with the ship's move? Yeah, so currently we are not doing anything. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it looks like we're going to be going zero to five um, along this ridge here. If you can see my mouse on high pack. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then so, coming yeah, go ahead. over. And then coming over to waypoint seven. Okay. Yeah. We can even start a new east move to get us back up onto the ridge. Do you want to go on this path? Yeah. Okay. Just because it, um, I was conferring that uh, there's more life on the other side. So we might as well start moving that way. Okay. All right. Due east. east Are we ready for a move? I am. I am. Okay. Bridge nav. Um, can we move five zero meters bearing zero nine zero, please? Thank you. What's up? Is it underneath me? Ashton, are you ready for this? Good morning. I'm ready for this. <laughs> Good morning, Nautilus. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks, Di. You're welcome. <laughs> Bring in the energy. Looks like our uh, bowling ball sources are getting in the larger thumb size here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Giants. Yeah, look at this one. Yeah. 14 pounders over here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, chat, open up. Ah. Is that a little urgent? All right, just a reminder for folks watching um, who are wondering um, how long this dive is. Um, it was estimated to be around 22 hour uh, dive, so we are continuing along, seeing what we will find. Yeah, only about 10 hours of that 22 left. Only about eight on bottom. And we are a little over halfway through our dive track. Oh, wow, we get lots of bottom time today. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What waypoint are we? At or near? We are nearing waypoint six, six seven. Six seven. Okay. Well, actually, that's not true. We're closer to waypoint six, but we're okay. on our way to waypoint seven. Got it. And there are nine waypoints total, so that gives you guys a little bit of a perspective. We're making our way through our waypoints. Look at the corals wiggling in the wind. <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Is the current still pretty chill, or? It's a more a here than last night. A little bit. Yeah. But it's not bad. The corals, my friend. 
guitar wiggling in the wind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. I only sing at 4 a.m. and in the shower, so. <laughs> Y'all are lucky today. <laughs> Loving it. Are you going to sing some Beyonce for us next? <laughs> Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you never know. She might be listening. We don't know if she might have <laughs> ocean exploration secretly. Beyonce, <laughs> if you're out there, <laughs> we're big fans here on the Nautilus. Hey, Steve, could you zoom in on this rock, please? Big coral fans. Yeah. <laughs> Is that only cool for there? me? I think it's really cool. It's the same shape as the cup coral. <laughs> yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, our friend sent us Diana, some more trivia, some too. for you in <laughs> the chat. Gorgia, possibly? About to get into that. More trivia. You want to zoom in the purple thing, please? Looks like Victor Gorgia. Some cup corals in the foreground. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Victor Brittle Gorgeous, stars. the purple? Yeah, Victor Gorgeous, the purple. I'm not okay, sure what the white, lighter color it is. I'll have to look that up. This is just a pretty shot in general. I don't know if this is a Steve comment, but I guess they're having a little bit of trouble with the photos coming through on the OET portal. From the... I don't know that they can see yeah. photos on the portal. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, for clarifying that those white ones are primnoids. Does Chris ever sleep? I don't think so. Only okay. when the puppy sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Easter pup date. Oh yeah, there oh, it is. Maybe. Chris, are those primnoids Norella? A Norella species? I'm looking at our guide here. So for anybody joining us new, we have experts ashore that are watching in real time along with you. And they are providing their expert guidance on what we're seeing on the seafloor, because not all of us are animal experts. Shelby, where do we have people tuning in from today on our watch? I will tell you right now. Um, we have Singapore, Brazil, Spain, Italy, France, Taiwan, Norway, Finland, Romania, of course the States are here, uh, the UK, Canada, and Australia. It's a global audience. Wow, that's great. Thanks Ooh, for joining us, everybody. I know. I never cease Bridge to be amazed how bunch. many people join us and from where. Can we move zero, or sorry, five zero meters, uh, bearing zero eight zero, please? Thank you. Can we get some partial zooms on the sponge, please? Looks like there's a basket star attached, maybe. It's beautiful. Ooh, uh, I wonder what the backside looks like too. I think this is the backside. Oh well, the other side. <laughs> The yep. other, whatever side this is, the other side is. <laughs> is that a euthyrid? All right, and we have the lasers on so that you can get a sense. Those green dots are about 10 centimeters, or they are 10 centimeters apart. So you're getting an idea of the scale of this sponge. Wow. Remember that time you asked me about the current and I said it was fine? Yeah, yeah we're coming up over the ridge, so yeah, I imagine uh, it's going to start picking up. It's increasing in everything. Good to know. 
Looks like there's a Paragorgia down there at the bottom. A little bubblegum coral. Ooh, it just nestled right in there. Could that be a Eurydidae? One of these guys? Oh, somebody's wondering, how do we choose the waypoints on the ridge to sort of uh, follow? Uh, we look at the multi-beam bathymetry data, and uh, we generally try to follow the ridge crest uh, so that we, well, traditionally, animals are typically more dense in areas like that, and it allows us to go from one side to the other of the ridge to see if there's a difference in animal density, you know, on one side versus the other, which mm -hmm. we seem to be seeing on this dive, mm -hmm. that as we're getting on the eastern side of the ridge, we're getting a bit higher density than we're seeing on the western side of the ridge, which might tell us something about predominant currents and mm -hmm. food in this environment. There's another one of these very large sponges. This one has some it's yellow some cr crinoids, crinoids yeah. attached. Loving the Easter colors, whites and pinks and yellows. Yeah, yeah. very True. appropriate. <laughs> um, this species is in the Eurydidae family, Conolasma. Yeah, looks like a bamboo a whip of a bamboo coral. Looks like really clear water here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're nearing that ridge line. So Trevor, that offset between Herc and the ship, you think that's mostly the current or is oh, that say, related yeah. to the ship's uh, different trajectory from where we were? No, I'd say that's current. All right, so you yeah. actually see where Atalanta spiked up to in the... Well, can they, yep. they get that resolution on Hi-Pack? Um, what do we see on Hi-Pack? Maybe if we really zoom in. <coughs> do we have an Atalanta track on there? Is it mainly Herc? Yeah. What am I looking at? Oh, jeez. Yeah, the red... Mm -hmm. uh, is Atalanta, but it's red looks it's a like her to me. Squirrely. Looks oh, like green is yeah, Atalanta. Yeah, it is green. But it's really short, though, eh? Yeah. Anyway, you can't I'm see it on the back, I guess. Anyway, yeah. can you see up in a Rob Nav here? What's the question? Can you see the Rob Nav computer? No, only if I look over your shoulder. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's, on it's channel currently. Three now. Yep. Yeah, there's the the big blue spike up of the Argus or uh, Atalanta Trail. And then as soon as we got on the ridge, it started oh. getting pushed. It's here too, Beth, if you want to look. So on high pack, the icon that predominantly shows the heading direction, that's not Herc, that's Atalanta? That, that and uh, the red and the blue are both Herc. Uh, okay. Got it, got it. Okay, thank you. Can we get a little bit of a zoom on Atalanta, please? Nice, thank you. Oh, let's do a quick around the room introduction for folks. If there's some new folks watching. Steve, can you come double wide on Hurt, please? I'll start. I am Shelby Johnson. I'm a marine conservationist and a science communicator and a science communication fellow on board. Annabelle? Uh, my name is Annabelle. I'm an undergraduate student studying microbiology and I'm with the science party on the ship. Oh, I guess that's me next. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Beth Orcutt. I'm a senior research scientist at the Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences in Maine. 
um, here on this expedition as a co-lead scientist. Um, I'm interested in the microbes that live on the rocks here on the seafloor. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Good morning, I'm Diane and uh, I am a science manager in training from the great ocean going city of Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah. What else was I supposed to say? Was I supposed to say something else, Shelby? I think okay, that was great. fantastic. Thank you. Just introducing yourself. <laughs> this is Steve from New England in the video chair. This is Ashton, the Atlanta pilot. I am from West Texas, and I live in New Orleans. This is Trevor on the craft. Uh, this is Lynette from Wisconsin. Oh, hi everyone, this is Holly Pooper, and I am serving as the cultural liaison on this trip. Aloha. Aloha, good morning. And we are Team Hard No. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, this is Jack. Thank you, Shelby. <laughs> Bridge nav. Is Can we move five zero meters bearing zero seven zero, please? Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Just fought you. Oh. <laughs> Fighting you over porch light. Sorry. get a partial zoom on this as we're going over yep. it. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you. You can come wide. All right. Oh, it looks like someone sent us another couple of uh, trivia questions to wake everyone up. Anyone up for a challenge? Yeah. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> do it. Let's do this. Yeah. All right, rock and roll. All right, first question. How many volcanoes are in the Pacific Ocean? Active? They did not specify. No, mm. I don't think active. I want to say, yeah, let's, let's go with non-active. Non how many non-active volcanoes are in the Pacific Ocean? Oh, well, no, it does like include all volcanoes, active and non-active. Yes, it, I am rereading, sorry, and it looks like they are including active in this. Let's go with, I'm going to go with 400,000. Whoa. All right, Whoa. any Whoa. other guesses? I'm going to guess 1.2 million. Okay. Anyone else? I guess 400,000 and one. <laughs> <laughs> the price is right. All right. Um, <laughs> anyone else? All right, the answer they gave is 75,000, and in parentheses it says 75% of the world's active volcanoes are located here. 75,000 seems low. It does. Yeah. I, I guess it, we'll need to clarify. Yeah. Are there more shipwrecks than volcanoes? Yeah, that's yeah I think that <laughs> that's crazy. Wasn't that one of our trivia questions yesterday? Yeah. Yes. We got some more bamboo coral, these skinny whips. One of them's got a squat lobster on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second question. Where does the name Pacific come from and what is its meaning? It comes from the ocean. Let's see, what did they, I'm interested in this, what they say. That's a good question. They said from mispronouncing specific. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which ocean? Be Pacific. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that's my typing. That was a low blow to society. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> the answer they said, 
uh, was that Pacific means peaceful um, and that explorer Ferdinand Magellan called the ocean Mar Pacific, peaceful sea. Hmm. Mm. Oh, Did that explorer ever actually go into this ocean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's suspect. I was going to say, based Annabelle, on our first few Google days that? of the cruise, <laughs> I disagree. Can we get a partial on this, please? Uh, yeah, I think I was just on top of a bamboo. Let's see if I can come down safely. Okay, Steve, go for it. Little sponge there. Oh, also that's a small one of those ones we were seeing yesterday. Yeah, it was oh, a little pink spot. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. There's also a little. Oh, yes, I saw that. All right, <laughs> Just sitting there. on the go. Yep, yep that's fine. <laughs> so it looks like that that answer is right. Um, when he came into the ocean, he encountered favorable winds which is why he called it Peaceful Sea. And that was the only time that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't lucky. he coming out of the Magellan Strait, though? Wasn't everything peaceful <laughs> after that? Good point. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you did it. Uh. <laughs> you definitely did. <laughs> oh, so cool. Diane's my hero for <laughs> going through the Magellan Strait multiple times. I was about to say multiple times on top of that. It's uh, it's beautiful. You should go. I don't know if I'm a hero though. It's just um, <laughs> it was a thing. It was a thing that I did. So cool. All right. I'd love to go explore down there a little bit more. Do some sailing. Those fjords. Ooh, what's that big fan? Oh, that sounds that so is beautiful. Oh big, yeah, there's big a big fan off to fan. our. Oh. Coming up in her view over there. soon. Do, do, do. Is it a fan or is it a sponge? We'll find out. Yeah, we'll do, see. Do, do, do. Dramatic approach. Looks spongy to me. Ooh. 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 Oh, wow. Look at that long oh, shadow it wow. casts. Look at the hold fast on that guy. Ooh. What? That's large. That is wow. very large. Can we get some lasers off? It's beautiful, off? the shape of it and the Yeah, it's the at least pattern. a meter. I don't I think, think I've seen this one off. on this yeah, dive. Yeah, I don't oh, think I've seen this one. Seen this Which one? Lasers Horton. off, please. Yeah. Lasers yeah, off, one, got them. This one's different than what we've been seeing. Wow, look at that. Wow. This is gorgeous. That is stunning. Wow. Chris Kelly says this is a fairy. 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 Yeah. S spell that? F A R R E I D. Ah. Mm. F F A. Whoa. Mm. With some crinoids, friends. That was a worthwhile beautiful detour. Shot. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was, yeah. Nice was little spin around. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. All right, last question. How many countries have a border with the Pacific Ocean or on the Pacific Ocean? Oh, that's a great okay, question. Okay, we got mm. them. <coughs> Can we count them? All of them. Steve, are you about to list them? I was about to. So we got Canada. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to reach 1.7. Mexico. 7, but Mexico. Uh, how many countries are in Central America? Because they all win. Plenty. Oh. A bunch. Almost all of them. Panama. So but they say, don't all border the... That goes out to our... Yeah, Pacific. Don't all border Pacific. So let's say mm, six. Right, right, so that's right, nine. Right. And then you got... We got Chile, Colombia. Colombia. Ecuador. Peru. Chile. But the number they gave is more than 20, but less than 60. Are we counting Antarctica as a country? <laughs> 47. Nope, not a country. There's, there's all the, uh, all the Pacific Islands as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All the Pacific yeah. Islands. Ooh. Ooh. Australia, New Zealand, Vanuatu. A lot Fiji. of Oceania. Isn't there even like Japan, Russia? Russia. 
China. All that. All right. Japan, Philippines. Philippines, yeah. Yeah, bridge, now. Indonesia. We can keep going and going. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero three zero, please? I'm Thank gonna you. say 40, because you said between 20 and yeah, 60. Yeah, I say 47. Okay, anybody else guesses? 41. All right. Nice. 39. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Anybody else? The number they gave is 55. Yeah. Nice. Dang. Fish. Oh, Trevor yeah. wins. <laughs> fish Trevor. coming into view. And Price is right. He would have got. Um, oh. He would have been able to run up to the stage. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this guy. What size? What? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. a fish. Where are you going, buddy? Oh, yeah. We can get lasers back on, Ashton. Lasers. Thank you. Coming on. Thank you, thank you. How big is this fish? Ooh, good size. I can't paint him. Is that a Corypenoides? There we go. All right, I got to go the other way. Yep. Sorry, fish. I mean, I guess. He's probably ha pleased about that. Um, yeah, I'm not anti-sorry. You're welcome, fish. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm leaving you alone. Chris Kelly says you need to track down that fish and grab it as a sample, Trevor. <laughs> 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 Enable thrusters. <laughs> yeah, confirming. Uh, Beth, Corypenoides on that fish. Cool. It's a fun name, Corypenoides. Lynette, can you confirm when I do we do a ship's move? Is that at point two knots? Uh, yeah. Okay. Zero point two. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So it looks like we're on top of another sheet flow type feature, mm -hmm. especially if you look in the Adelina view. Just seems to go all around us here on Herc. I don't like having that on, but sometimes it gives us a better view of what's in the area. That extra yeah. light. Mm -hmm. Can we get some partials on these here? Yep, sure. The other thing that Atlanta light does is allow us to look at the tether. Which yes. is very helpful. Yeah, feel free to choose lights as you wish. All right, Steve, zoom in there, please. I'm kind of on the rocks, might be lumpy. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Cool. Looks like we have a Victor Gorgia coming up on our right. Mm -hmm. Good eye. I'm drawn to purple. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your favorite color? Well, I don't have a favorite color, I no. don't think. There's something there with the Victor Gorgia that's more white. Can we get a partial yeah, on go that? Yeah, ahead. Zoom in. This one? Uh, sorry, the one to the right. To the right. Uh, come up, please, Steve. Where? Oh, you know, you had it. You were good. Sorry. Oh. It was, you had it in the frame. It was just on the right side of the frame. Oh, okay. Zoom in again, Steve. Oh, you're talking associate. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. And also, oh. I, the uh, dark purple and the light purple, I wasn't sure if those were two different things or Roger. one and the same. Okay, thank you very much. And verdict is? <coughs> same or different? Same, same. Look at this big crack in the rocks running along the Atalanta oh, yeah. view. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's a nice view it's in like Atalanta. It's a big fault thing. Yeah. Nope, that didn't help. Can I please get a DVL reset? Thank you. Looks like we have a different type of sponge, both ahead of us and just off to our right. Look, look like a little white donut. White mm. donut. Mm. That sounds good. Can you zoom in <laughs> on the donut, please? Pretty far, but there's a bamboo under me I don't want to land on. 
see how we can do here. Yeah, a little hard to tell. Might be a sacrophallix, might be something else. I'm not quite sure from this distance. All right, come Thank on, you. Please. Ashton, how does that sponge look? Edible? Oh, <laughs> not at this time of morning. <laughs> <laughs> Too early. <laughs> So there are three shifts that we go through when there are dives. There is the 8 to 12, 12 to 4, and 4 to 8. And we rotate until the dive is done. For those wondering out there. All right, we're approaching waypoint 7. We are almost at the 1500 meter mark. We've come up about 500 meters during this dive so far. Oh, here's a curious question. Someone's asking, since you're looking into microbes and how they might relate to ferromanganese crust, would it be helpful at all to collect some of the dead sponge skeletons that have crust covering them? Um, and possibly compare them to the rocks that you're collecting? Uh, potentially. Um, there's only so many samples we can look at at a time, so we do have to make some choices about priority. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that that hasn't risen to the level of priority yet, mm -hmm. um, but it is an interesting, uh, interesting question. We have Sometimes we pick up rocks thinking that they're going to be, you know, basalt, original mm -hmm. uh, volcanic material, and then they turn out to be manganese crust on top of sediment. So that already oh. gives us a little bit of an indication of different, or how crust forms on different materials. Mm. Haven't quite gone to the step of looking at it on uh, animals in particular, but that could be an interesting next question. Quick follow-up question, Beth, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, just for, I guess, curiosity, going forward um, after you do sample and uh, get the rocks, um, how does it usually work once you sort of uh, crush them up? Are you crushing them up to just look at them under a microscope uh, in that form? Or are you mixing the crushed up rock in some sort of solution? And that helps you sort of get a better idea of what's going on just sort of um, what the process looks like a little bit. Yeah, so when the rocks come on board, Annabelle and I work as a team to uh, break off the outer crust of the rocks and homogenize that material. And when we subsample it for um, counting the number of cells, we're not necessarily going to do that by microscopy because that's laborious. <laughs> we mm -hmm. will try a different method called flow cytometry, which kind of is an automated way to detect cells. It's a little tricky because there's a lot of particles you have to distinguish from. Mm -hmm. We also collect samples for bulk DNA analysis. We'll collect samples for organic carbon analysis, which gives us another measure of how much organic material um, which may largely be made up of cells and cell byproducts. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other analyses that we do, we also collect water samples at the same time uh, as we collect rocks on the seafloor. And we do similar analyses on those samples so that we can cross compare what's in the water and what's on the rocks. Can we get a partial on these? Yeah, Price totally. 
gorgeous Go ahead, thing please. next to it. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is what Chris was looking for, but just zooming in on anything like that. Great. What's that tiny white thing between the two? It looks like a tiny little cup coral. Well, it could be. Um, I don't remember which one. All right. Thank you, Steve. So that little white coral was a uh, our uh, know it, Norella. <coughs> Sorry. Ashton, people are wondering if you're still reeling from your first uh, rock collection last <laughs> last time we were here. <laughs> I am still still flying high with that <laughs> thing, but can't be my my final rock, you know. It's and just it won't the be. beginning of a great like sea of rock collecting. You're gonna be juggling rocks soon with the with, with Hercules. <laughs> oh, is that a new party trick? <laughs> Going to need more craft arms. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Steve, I keep messing with the lights over here. It's all right. Is it just me, or have we stopped seeing those dark gray sponges Thank that you. we saw at the beginning of the dive? Has anybody else seen one since we started? I have not. The I, shift? Have not. I have I not. I have not. They also blend in really well, so let me. <laughs> Seems like similar terrain, though, that we're zooming over. Yep, but mm -hmm. 500 meters shallower. Yeah, true. What's this? Lower oh. oxygen concentration Ooh. up here. Zoom on that, Steve. Oh. Hmm. We got here. It's like the white one we saw yesterday, but it's yellow. And different wow. entirely. Mm. Very cool. That is very different that than what I have seen on an earlier dive. Wow. What are we looking at here? Yeah, what is this? An encrusting coral? Yeah, is Maybe. that a thing? Maybe. Can you zoom in a little tighter there, Steve? Oh, wow. Full zoom. It looks like there's more than eight. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering if it's uh, crazy. I'm so anthid. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Hi, Tina. Nice to see you online. She says definitely, definitely a zoanthid. So what's the zoanthid? Why is it on that rock? Or is it on top of a sponge, Whoa. maybe? Maybe it's in taken over the encrusting sponge? I don't understand. Annabelle, you want to give us some info with uh, the Google in the sky about zoanthids? The Google in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the great Google in the sky. Um, you had like read my mind. I, I just have the <laughs> Google page up. I haven't started my research. Yet. Okay, um, we'll, we'll come back to you. How's that? Okay, yeah, that's great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'll give you a fun fact in a minute. Thanks. That's so funny, Diane, because we were um out on the deck the other night and there's this like crazy cloud formation and one of the coral scientists was like it's the great bathy pathy in the sky <laughs> <laughs> love it was that ryan 
it was. One of the coral scientists. <laughs> uh, maybe the maybe resident. The coral resident coral scientist. Yeah. Oh, Great cruise. Pathy, pathy. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also a song about that. The great bathy bathy in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Sing it, Diane. No, no, it. no, 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 no. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Get it. I mean, it could be a hit single. What was the name of the band someone was talking about earlier? King George and the something had to do with our cruise. Oh yeah. King George and the Sky Corals. Oh, science team, question for you. Someone's wondering, is the lab on Nautilus only used for sample sorting, macro, and preliminary assessments, or are there more spe specific chemical and biological studies done in the lab? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that is entirely dependent on what the scientists bring with them. There's not a lot of uh, analytical equipment on the ship. Uh, for doing things like microscopy or any kind of chemical analyses. So it's primarily a uh, archival type situation, so preparing samples to send back to shore for more detailed analysis. Oh, I didn't know that um, people could bring their own equipment on board. That's cool. Yeah, everything in the back corner, like uh -huh. I shipped here oh. from Maine to bring onto the ship for Annabelle and I we to work with. A little sea star there over on the right. We don't always have a massive rock saw. Yeah, although I think the rock saw is now for Nautilus. It's oh, not, cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that the scientists brought on board. Hey, we do zoom in, please. Oh, got a little star friend here. This one's very lean compared to the ones we saw. Mm. <laughs> That's not. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Haven't so a couple other things that have seemed to have disappeared from earlier in the dive. We haven't seen any of those um, yellow stalked crinoids either mm -hmm. at this depth. That's true. Which were quite abundant at the beginning of the dive. Indeed, they were. They were indeed. There were also some hemichorialum uh, corals down below, which we haven't really seen much of since we started our shift. So there's definitely some zonation going on. Which is one of the nice things about one of these longer dives where we traverse. Um, oh. oh. Check that out. Wow. Oh. Happy Easter to us. Look at that. Oh, I mean, it looks like the. <laughs> wow. Sort of I thought that was so much Telestrator when it first showed up. But it's <laughs> <You know. did. laughs> I saw it on the Adel and it came and I was like, there's no way it's that yellow. Oh, my goodness. So this might be a Bolosoma species. Oh, wow. Wait for some confirmation from our scientists ashore, when, and I'm sure we'll come around to get a view of the inside. Can we lose the lasers now? Yeah, let me kill the lasers. Thank you. Get some pictures. something kind of on the underside of it. A little shrimpy. Yeah. Can we get a partial yeah, zoom, zoom in, on some of these attached? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yellow oh. bolosoma. Confirmation from shore. Wow. Very nice. Look at that. Let's Thank you. We can front. come back out around wide. This There's is the front, I think. Paragorgia from the uh, behind it, the pink coral. Looks like Chrysogorgia, the light pink right in front of it. All right, thank you, Steve. How are we defining the front of a sponge versus the back? The water <laughs> inlet, I would think. Yeah, where water comes in, I define as the front. So the, the, the inside of the cup. The inside is the front? Yeah, I think the water oh, goes the into face. the bowl and then out the... Well, I thought it was the other way around. I thought it wanted Which way does the current feel like it's pushing you, Trevor? 
<laughs> downslope. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I think it makes sense for filter feeding to. Yeah, I thought I thought that I could be wrong. I thought it went in the bigger side because there was more surface area to grab more stuff, and the smaller part was the exhaust, for lack of a better word. I like that term. Maybe Chris is there and can shed some light. Steve says you, water usually flows from the outside and out the top. Out the top. Uh. Huh. uh I think we all need to be looking at the same photo and point to Kat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're all using the same little sea star over there. Right? Like is that like our eight-pointed sea star we collected earlier? Yeah, it yeah. is. Crinoid. For like a, a hollow sponge, I could see what he's saying. Like totally, a basal, yeah. is that the right term? Yeah, totally. All right, so we're coming up on waypoint seven, which looks like it's a, oh. a little knoll. Uh, in our high pack view, and then we might come down into a little saddle on the other side. Ooh, Ooh look at that thing. Uh, fish. Oh, yeah. Another fish. Oh, yeah, that fish right ahead of us. Very sm it had like very little fins on Ooh. it. Ooh. Do not want any part of this operation. Lynette, can we <laughs> hold on putting in a ship's move so we can explore the top of this for a little bit? Absolutely. Thanks. Yep. All right, we're looks like we're coming up on the top at here. The top. Yeah, so let's let's explore the top from different angles if we can. Sure. Yeah. We do have about forty meters left on a move, but oh, that okay. should that should pull you right up into the center of this. Yeah, yeah great. Raj, there's still a little lump ahead of me, so yeah. Okay. False summit. Uh, someone wondering how watch teams are formed. Well, they all have uh, vital roles that have to be um, filled. So there's always someone on video, on navigation. Argus, or in this case, Atlanta pilot, um, Herc pilot, um, data logger, and several science uh, people on the science team, of which usually includes a watch leader like Beth. Um, and there's also um, room for other people to sit in. Um, like on this screen, we're, we're lucky enough to have Epo as our cultural coordinator with us. And so, um, yeah. I don't know if they're randomly formed. I don't think so. We put some thought into it. Yeah. It's not random. Got, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not <laughs> I random. I say so. <laughs> they're like, did you like put their names in a box? <laughs> so we want to have a mixture of expertise uh, and also experience on the ship. So we, for instance, don't want to have a shift full of a bunch of new people um, or, or. so that there's <laughs> a chance to um, make sure there's appropriate training going on during mm -hmm. uh, shift think about expertise so for instance we would we might try to spread out people who have animal characterization experience geology experience try to spread that out over, over shifts mm -hmm. um, we also are mindful Ooh. of which rooms people are sleeping in so that we're trying to get people on different shifts in different rooms that's true that is much appreciated all of it yes including the expertise part For us newbies, it's nice to have some guidance. And there's also always a science communication fellow, which is There you. is always a science communication fellow. Woot woot, Shelby. Little, little fish there. Oh yeah. We got a floaty. Oh, that's a pretty coral. Yeah. Oh. That's the floater. One is not cool. too late to see. Yep. <coughs> Can we get a partial on this paragorgia here? Just curious what's on it. It might just be yeah. brittle stars. Can you turn lasers on, please? Yeah, lasers are on. Okay, Steve, I think we can go in there.
No, it does look like there's maybe a demo sponge in the back. Oh, yeah. Attached to the rock, oh, yeah. but it's Good a little catch. different than the one we saw earlier in you the dive. You can push in more there, Steve. There's also a squat lobster down there at the bottom. <laughs> Is that a sponge? No, I think that's um, what we just saw. Oh, you're saw. right. That's a... Um, so anthid. So anthid. You're right. You're right. Oh, so it Annabelle. Looks like attached Grazo to uh, like a old hold fast or something. Yeah. Hold zoom. All right, come wide, please. You Thank thought you. you were going to get away from us. Any fun mm -hmm. facts about zoanthids for us? Um, the, the fact I found is that they are in many different environments, including shallow water, and you can buy them for your touch tank if you really want. And there's a lot of guides online about how to keep them alive in your touch tank. Oh, what do they like? I don't think you can buy these deep sea ones. Not so. the deep sea ones. <laughs> <laughs> these are special. They are. What did you say? You buy them for your what tank? <laughs> like a touch tank? Touch tank. Touch or tank? Or like an, an aquarium? aquarium? When you go to an aquarium and then you can touch certain <laughs> sea creatures in the little shallow tank. I have never wow. heard of I've that. Never heard of that. Is really? that a thing? Re wait, seriously? You, you never, never heard, heard of a touch tank? tank? Wow. No. No, I never heard of a touch tank. You don't have a touch tank in your aquarium in your state if you have one? No. Oh, As this one's a touch tank. That is crazy. I've uh, never heard of it. It's like one of those gardens where kids can go like touch all like the plants. Like a petting zoo? Or yeah. Oh. yeah. Petting zoo for a little bit. <laughs> They've got Crazy. like hermit crabs. Yeah. Like, uh, oh. Horseshoe crabs maybe. Yeah. If I could touch Skates. any of the things we've Skates. seen so far, that purple thing from yesterday. Purple the thing. Ursula, oh, Ursula. situation that we oh. slurped. The tube, yeah. tube oh. anemone. I'd be scared. Yeah. I would like to touch that one. I just want to like run my hand across it. That was my favorite yeah. creature so far. <laughs> ah, nice. That's uh, still in the, the the bio bucket, I believe. So yeah, oh, yeah. You might have yeah. a chance to touch it. It's gonna be fun <laughs> to get out of there. I think there's gonna be a line for that touch tank. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still circling this. Knoll feature that is centered on waypoint seven. Working our way around it. Yeah, so I think ship moves complete, which means Atlanta is going to do a little more swinging probably. We could do a little bit Ooh. of a spin here. See what's over this side. It's a good drop off. It is. Kind of all sides. Someone's wondering how prevalent are fungi and the microbes on the seafloor? I think you mentioned maybe a dive or two ago that they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but we don't really have we, a good yeah. idea of how prevalent they are. Yeah. You should re-ask that question. Whoever asked that question, you should re-ask that question when Leela is on watch. Because that That's is her true. expertise. Yes. I'm sure she would love to talk about that. Yes. And loop is on 12 to 4 if you want to catch her. <laughs> you just missed her. <laughs> you just missed her. Bonk. So Chris Kelly's <laughs> been answering a bit of our questions about that bolosoma, and I don't know if this clarifies things for folks, but water enters the sponge from the back round side and comes out both the top, the osculum, as well as the concave side. Okay, so, so I was wrong. He's been listening closely, apparently. Uh, to our conversations. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Great. Cool. I'm trying to catch up with you over there, Hercules. Yeah, I'm trying to take a 6 8 wrap out, so you can keep yeah, following we're me. Coming back over terrain, we've, we've I seen this before. recognize this Paragorgia. I think I'm fighting the current here. There we go. What's this? A little 
Yeah. Hmm. Weird colored thing. Oh no, that's not. Trigger the light. Never mind. Trevor, is your intention to kind of come around on the east side? I just was doing a full lap at the top here. Okay. And come around wherever you'd like, though. Yeah, if we could maybe take a heading towards, uh, I don't know, 75. Sure. Just to come around the east side of this feature. Yeah. Oh, someone's wondering, is there a regular known spawning time for these deep sea corals like you see with the shallow water coral reefs? That is really poorly known in terms of my understanding mm -hmm. from talking to various coral experts. Um, I don't know that a deep sea spawning event has even been observed been, right, or <laughs> um, because of the very stochastic nature of when we get to dive on these features. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a lot about deep sea biology in terms of those questions that are it's not well known. Hmm. Chris Kelly is giving us more information about the bolosoma um, in the chat. So He's saying that if a high current event, like an internal wave occurs, and if it's moving towards the concave side, it will create a lot of stress stress and pressure that could detach the sponge from the substrate. It will be like a sail, but if the high current comes towards the round side of the sponge, that side is more hydrodynamic, and therefore the sponge can tolerate it better. Makes huh. sense. Cool. Mm, so yeah. cool. Nice fact. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Lynette, do you mind zooming out on high pack just a little bit so I can see the rest of the dive track? Okay. Um, I think we should go ahead and start putting in a ship's move to move us towards waypoint eight. Okay. okay. And see what's in that saddle to our northeast. Okay. Cool. Steve, would you mind throwing a high pack screen up over here on one of the blank ones? Roger. Thank you. Bridge now. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero seven zero, please? Thank you. Well, someone's wondering, does Hercules have some kind of specialized bumper structure situation going on? He's <laughs> <laughs> got a good bumper structure, yeah. <laughs> you see in, the, in channel two, you can see the back bumper hanging off uh, on the low part of the screen. It's kind of lit up by the two butt lights. That prevents me from backing into stuff. Or, I mean, it, it takes the impact. That's just an aluminum tube. And in the front, hanging out on the the top side of that Atalanta view, you can see the forward bumper bar, and that protects all of our lights and cameras and sampling equipment up there. And that's actually rubber lined, so it's meant to meant to bounce a bit. So we use that as well as the stuff down low uh, to protect us from running into stuff. Look at what's going on in that crevice there. Yep, yeah, they like it's the canyon features seem to get a nice <laughs> oh. density. Can we get Lo a partial zoom in sure, there? Sure, yeah. A little localized flow increase. We've got a Paragorgia and what looks like a, maybe a mushroom, mushroom coral. Mushroom coral, maybe? Mm -hmm. And a Chrysogorgia at the bottom. A little crinoid on the side. I think that's what that is, What's yeah. What's the thing on the right there? The yellowy, yellowy guy. Not sure. Ah, just lost it. Congrats. Oh, well. Thanks. Anthem 
plastics. Yeah, so the pink organism that was on the left of that canyon, this type of soft coral called anthomastis. Trevor, we have a request from shore that when we come across one of these kind of very leggy branched colonies to try to get some partial zooms. Leggy branch colonies, what to what? Uh, yeah, I'm what not animal? quite exactly sure, but uh, maybe we'll we'll figure it out when we see it. All right, is that, are we looking for coral though? Like, yes. Okay. Leggy branched colony. Hey, did we, did we sample any of that white wispy spider web stuff the other day? We tried. I don't think it was uh, salvageable in the lab. Uh, too bad. Yeah. I thought I saw one earlier today also. Okay. Yeah, I haven't really seen it much on this dive. But not much. This, maybe this over here. I'm not sure if that's what we're looking for. <laughs> Steve's saying we need a reverse telestrator for the scientists ashore. <laughs> or maybe uh, this that would one be on the right too is fun. Better. I'm not sure if this is what we want, but we can at least have a look. That might be a full bonanza. <laughs> that would be a yeah. We a can have dueling uh, yeah. yes. emojis. Yes. Right, <laughs> exactly. What if he gives it a hedgehog and you've given it a dinosaur? Like, <laughs> what happens then? The dinosaur wins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come wide on that one and have a look at the one to our right. Okay, go ahead. Again, I'm Kinda not sure if this is exactly what we want to look at. But yeah. I'm getting Never lots hurts. of go ahead, Steve. stills of this, so if so. So there's a Chrysogorgia in the background. Okay. Yeah. What are we looking at here? It's really hiding behind that rock, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And now we wait for Shore to decide, I guess. <coughs> Ooh, la la. Come wide, please. Yeah, thanks. Nice so the human. yellow one in the front of the pink is a plexorid. Thank you, Steve. Okay, we can keep going. Roger that. Please. Oh, I guess we were looking for something with branches. I know that probably wasn't what we were after. It's okay. Never hurts to have some nice beauty shots. Aren't there a few live uh, fixed deep sea cameras that are owned by some folks? Uh, yeah, there are uh, observatories, a couple of them in the Pacific Ocean, like Ocean Networks Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and the regional cable array, I believe, has cameras as well, mm -hmm. trained on some parts of the seafloor. Um, I think there's also some in Europe. Uh, it's part of Mesonet, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking in high pack, you'll see that the ship is now moving over towards a little depression. Uh, Herc is just coming up on the edge of this knoll feature. Mm. Okay. 
storage nav. Can we do another move five zero meters bearing zero seven zero, please? Thanks. Diane, somebody was wondering, is it possible that the spider web like structure was a foundation, like support for eggs from like a fish or an octopus or something? But could be, but I know we weren't really able to collect any of that, so unknown. Yeah, that was one of the um, ideas that it was sort of like a mm -hmm. leftover egg sac right. or something like that, but mm -hmm. unconfirmed. So, so far, this other side of the knoll seems a bit barren <laughs> compared to where we were. Do you mind if I steal bubble cam for a gauge check? Thanks. Check out that pillow. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a fish off to our right. Oh, yes. Might have, might have just enough leash to check out the fish. Looks like another Coryphenoides. We saw one earlier. Sure. Can we get a partial zoom also on that urchin that the fish is just uh, passing over? Yeah, go ahead, Steve. And can we get lasers off? Yeah, lasers coming off. Oh, well, it's okay. Now the fish is gone. Oh, there's some of that wispy stuff on the rocks behind. Oh, yeah, yeah. there it mm -hmm. is. Okay, we can come wide. Thanks. Okay. Well, we came for the urchin, and we found wispy white stuff. <laughs> Mysterious wispy white stuff. We can get lasers back on. I Laser. got it. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's interest in the pink coral that was in that shot. Interest in sampling? Uh, getting a closer look at it. Sure, just the one on the b just below the lasers. I think so. Let's let's have a look at that. All right. trying to get an ID on it. Do you want me to stop the ship? Uh, no, we're just trying to get okay. a partial zoom. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, zoom in, please. And what's that yellow? Don't know. Is it possible right to get it right just a little bit tighter, Go Steven? Ahead. Thank you. Okay, we can come wide. All right, thanks. It's the a yellow is a kite. Chitin. Chitin. I thought it looked like one of those. What's a chitin? I know a fun factoid about it. Go I don't ahead. know exactly where in the tree it lives but it's constantly growing little teeth on the bottom and those okay. rotate in and out and it basically scours rock surfaces so it just wears down those little teeth so fast that it's constantly like almost like a um, conveyor belt building new teeth 
And what is it doing? Why is it scouring the rock? Ah, food. Oh, okay. Microbes. Wild. All right, the pink coral that we were seeing was a hemichorallium. Looks like there's more particles or like marine snow coming into view a little bit. Yeah, water's not as clear here. Yeah. Yeah, so now Herc is coming over the depression between this knoll and where we're trying to get to on waypoint eight. So we'll just keep those ship moves coming just to yeah, for now. get through the downslope. Yep. Okay. Raj. Asako giving us more info on that chitin, Polyplacophora. She says we've seen them before, but could only get a good look at that brown plate. So we got a, a better shot of it today. Oh, good. So thanks. Someone's wondering, what's the maximum visibility distance? Mm. I guess it depends, or? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah it depends on a couple of things. Never more than 50 meters, mm. but sometimes more than 25. Mm. Yeah, that's a hard one to answer. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it also depends on are we looking from Herc or Atlanta. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's easy when the light only has to go one direction. So Herc's light's into Atlanta's camera. But if it has to go away from the ROV, bounce off a rock and come back, it's got to go twice the distance. So. Yeah, hard to, hard to answer that question. Mm. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero six five, please? Thank you. Does Herc have emergency lighting or backup lighting if like a light should go out or you just sort of work with lights we as have, they come? We have seven different light circuits and mm -hmm. we almost always have almost all of them on. Cool. Yeah. And if they go out, then we work with what we've got. And of course, we got spares on the ship to right. replace between dives if necessary. Right. But they're pretty reliable. Can we get a partial oh, sponge? sponge? Yep. Oof. Okay, zoom in, please.
How's the current feeling at the it's, moment? Uh, it seems it's pushy. medium. It's pretty much totally fine until I try to do some weird angle of zoom. So if I if I go, oops, if I get a neutral and go dead stick, here we go. Get oh, so it's coming from the north and pushing us. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay, thanks. I guess that kind of makes sense, getting pushed through the saddle there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just curious to me that there were less animals on the western side if the current is coming from the north, but it might just be how the hydrodynamics work around this ridge oh, feature. Oh, I see. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? What's that yellow down there in the oop? Just went off screen. Mm. There's more of it coming in on the right side. Is that our zoanthid? And more, yeah, encrusting zoanthid, whatever you want to call it. Put it in your touch tank. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your tank and touch it. Who's that on the left? Yeah, it's a type of um, Is it a fly trap anemone. anemone. This guy kind of down here? Yeah, under the lasers. Yeah, so, uh, Go ahead, zoom. I'm not what you'd call stable, but. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh. look at that. Ooh. Something out of Mario. I think it's cool. I was going to say Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> the I dumpster just... guy? Yeah. <laughs> the dumpster Oscar. guy. Wow. Oscar. More <laughs> Zoe has it. Wow, name. look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, we got a fish. Look at That's that. That's lovely. So do zoanthus sort of belong to the same like subclass as stony corals? Are they related? All right. Um, well, if it is a zoanthid, that? that's a type of hexacoral. I don't know if so um, <laughs> they're both in the <laughs> Cnidarian anthozoan. But because it's I'm not exactly sure that's what we were looking at. Got Tina chiming in here. Oh, I think it might. Might actually be a hydrozoan. I'm not sure. Oh, somebody said a separate order of hexacorals. Yeah, okay. exactly. Gotcha. Okay. So we're a hexacoral again coming about? over. Mm -hmm. It's just a. So anthids are in hexacorals. I see. Yeah. Okay. Same level as oh. Chlorectinians. Okay. That's what, okay. That's what I thought. It just got very murky. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It also came up a little bit, didn't we? No, we're at roughly the same depth. It's okay. just the ground below us is sinking. Do the currents down here ever change directions based on like seasons or anything? Are they relatively constant? Good question. Um, you could probably have a predominant current, but it can change. Uh, we've also got internal waves that can come around these seamounts that move the water direction. There are, um, as far as I know, there's not a lot of current sensors around seamount environments um, if Emil, Emil, was on with us, maybe he could comment on this. That's his expertise, thinking about hydrodynamics. Yeah, on a NA-134, we talked a lot about internal... Yeah, internal currents, waves internal crashing. Waves and fish. How you could spot different types of sediment uh, ripples, which 
Oh, cool. Whoa. Wow. Oh. Is that a chimera? Is that one of those ghost Is ones? Oh, look at its fins go. Huh. Very different motion. Lasers off. Oh, gotta get some shots of that. Wow. Lasers off. Lasers. Ashton. Sorry. Killing the lasers. Did they come? They're off. Okay. Where'd you go? <laughs> He's like, leave me alone. Towards me. <laughs> <laughs> He's in your lights over here. Oh, there's that yellow oh. stock. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh. What's our guess? Or what do we think this is? A chimera. Gosh, it almost swears ray like. It really does not want us to be following it. <laughs> it's right, like, okay, I'm going to go this way now. Oh, man. I think I got a Bridge gazillion now. stills of that. Good. Good. Yeah, I got some too. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero six five, please? Thank you. Oh, Stephen, question for you um, that maybe um, someone's wondering how wide of an angle does the camera cover when it's not zoomed in? How wide of an angle? Um, this wide. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's a pretty wide angle lens because I'm just thinking of when things get close to it. That's true. St they still, d they don't, they look further away than they are. I that believe the optics uh, specs are published on the Insight Pacific website. This is an Insight Pacific Zeus Plus. So if a viewer at home wants to do their own homework and tell us, that would be great too. It's a pretty big zoom range. I'm going to guess something like 20 millimeter to 3 hundred millimeter but is that is that's those numbers guess. mean something different for uh, stills cameras versus video cameras um, no but they will it depends on the sensor size oh, okay yeah so the bigger the sensor the wider your wides are if that makes okay. sense. okay yeah, yeah sure Someone's at 135 degrees. I don't know if that's true or not, but... <laughs> I think that rings a bell. <laughs> so this saddle seems to be like a sheet flow, almost. Uh, the short film about the herons and eagles. It's called Nesting with the Devil. Do you have that downloaded on anything out here? I think we should do a, a movie watch on our transit back. Uh, that's a good question. I don't think I do, but I probably have it on Google Drive. If it's a 10-minute video and 12. multiple people are 12-minute yeah. video, then multiple people will enjoy it, then Justin will be happy to help us get that. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sweet. I'd love to watch that. Yeah, I just have to talk to him ahead of time and not at the moment we need it.
I remember a couple of years ago there was a uh, SCF sailing who wanted to who was really into college football and there was a very important game that he had a you know a streaming subscription to but wanted to stream the game and I don't remember if it was Justin or if it was a previous data engineer he said yeah no problem we can do that it's gonna take a lot of bandwidth as long as you get the buy-in from you know a significant number of people on the ship so we went around with a little petition huh. <laughs> kind of, you know, 30 signatures saying yeah I would like to we'd all support him in watching this college football game <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing some radio streams of sporting events Oh, what? Well, no more data than a phone big call, right? Yeah, totally. Bruhaha about a musician canceling a show so he could watch the uh, oh. Duke UNC game. It was recently. a country singer, I yeah. think. I don't remember his name, but it was true. <laughs> the fandom up there is just wild in the Carolinas, especially North Carolina. What's this sponge? So, um, Trevor and Nav, to the degree possible to stay on the downslope east side of the ridge. Um, at least that was where they were seeing higher animal density. Might be easier to see if we zoom out a little bit to see the ridge. Um, uh, you want to stay sort of on this side? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Just a little bit, not too far down. Okay. Um, and it gets it's going to get very steep as we get to waypoint eight. <laughs> but just it's just a reminder, we don't need to like make a big move difference. Okay. Roger. Celtics net at 9.30 a.m. Hawaiian time today. <laughs> Is that college football? That's uh, basketball. basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor gets a pass. He's from Canada. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. A uh, little, looks like Victor Gorgia on the, the uh, right there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chrysa Gorgia over here. I've always been jealous of people that live on the west coast of the U.S. for what time the sporting events start. Because <laughs> big games start late on the east coast. That's true. There's a leggy coral anything over here on our right leggy yeah. yeah can you turn lasers on please lasers although Chris is uh, out with a puppy at the moment oh. <laughs> but he can always review the video later you better come back with some pics <laughs> that's a valid excuse he gets a pass <laughs> Someone watching from Sweden is wondering, are most animals we encounter unable to detect light? Um, they're getting the impression that most of them are not very uh, reactive when Hercules uh, approaches them. Well, the fish did not like us, so. <laughs> yeah, well, fish have but that might be modified eye spots, yeah. so they're probably a bit more sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that the brittle stars sometimes right. respond to our presence, but that's yep. probably more related to pressure and yeah. sound. Yep. And <laughs> it's also, yeah, I was going to say vibrations yeah. and sound yep. and electric signals, probably. Yeah. I, I still want to see one jump off of a coral. I can't believe we I missed go, that we twice. We have to go back yesterday. and watch that. I know. Yeah. Ooh, look at the height of this one. Whoa. Oh, that's a tall Ooh. one. Tall. Finley. Oh, and something's on there. Yeah, brittle star. Oh, Make, yeah. It jump. Make it jump. <laughs> Make it jump. Make it jump. Jump, jump, jump. Don't do it. Oh, Victor Gorgia. <laughs> yeah, another Victor Gorgia in the background. Right. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero eight five, please? Thank you.
Uh, someone's wondering, I'm assuming they're referring to the high pack screen, um, wondering is the steepness to the north of eight a real feature or is it an artifact mapping? Great Steep question. Steepness to the north of eight. Oh, over, over there. No, this is like, if you look at the multi-beam, this is a very, very sharply defined ridge that rises up from the seafloor. Um, I don't know that we have the underlying full multi-beam map loaded up in high pack to show that, um, but it is a very pronounced feature. It's like a knife's edge. Yeah. We've mapped over this in a couple different directions to confirm that. Got a little fish there again. Over to the right. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A wee little guy. Is there a reason that so many of the fish um, down here look more like eels? Is it a more like energy efficient structure? Hmm. It looks like you're going to have to consult the question. Google in the sky for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the, the great bathy pathies in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> or what was it? That sounds right. That was it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <That> was it. <laughs> what rhymes with bathy pathies? Okay, bathy pathies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a hard one to rhyme. Mm. Laffy Taffy. Hey. Oh, there you go. <laughs> not way too long about that. <laughs> that was good. What do we got there in the background? Some type of sponge. Yeah. Looks like lungs. A giant whale tooth. <laughs> oh. It's I would not want to see that whale. Pop out. <laughs> <laughs> so these are. Two Walteria sponges yeah, with they a look crinoid on the top of the Healthy right and hands. happy. Plump. Looks they like really do look like art museum. <laughs> yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. As opposed to that one day where we saw so many of like dead skeletons of them, the Walteria. I don't feel like we've seen many of that. Uh, What's this floating thing? That dive. Do you want the floating thing, please? Yeah. Oh. Gray tube. Ooh, gray tube. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's an animal. <laughs> it has a much better scientific name than gray tube, but for now, <laughs> until until we know, <laughs> gray tube guy. Wow, it's really. You think uh, it's a tina four? Oh. No, I don't think. So. I wonder if it has control of where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> it might. It has like a know what this is. like a. Is it that like a faint red pink sort of yep. lining? Yeah, yeah. Can we get a partial on the zoom interior on it? We this we is, have this is partial. partial. Zoom. Okay. Or oh, sorry. Zoom? Yeah, more zoom. Yeah, go ahead. Can we get a more zoom? Do you want me to kill the lasers or sure. keep the lasers? Ooh, better kill the lasers. Whoa. 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 That is so. Oh my gosh! This Look is at this alien spaceship we have been looking for. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What oh, are you not know? Big fan. Yeah. That Pretty would be so fingers. interesting. Um, go back to your curiosity, Stephen, of like if it's just going with the flow, or yeah. does it have any like tiny little siphons or thrusters that are we can't see <laughs> that are yeah. helping it? I don't know. Okay, some type of. That's what I was wondering if it was a pyrosome. A pyrosome. Ooh, what's that? I need to Google that now. They're one-celled colonial. Are you free floating. Uh-oh, uh -oh, he's oh. too Oh, right they're free floating. Oh, oh. Well, look at the scary mouth. Oh. oh. It's more like a pink tube now. Yeah. Uh, from that angle, it almost looked like that worm from Men in Black. Here, sorry. For a second. <laughs> <laughs> Way That's far so away. cool. We just Pyrosome. follow it. Yeah. yeah. I'm on a rock. I can't. Take Wait, us I to your leader. Looks like they're, are they bioluminescent? They are often bioluminescent. Ooh, that would have been cool to see too. So they're free floating. Love that. 
Well, that's a fun surprise. Yeah, for Tina the popping in and saying pyrosome. It's a tunicate. Oh, oh whoa. Wow. free floating tunicate. Wow. Well, it's clearly got somewhere to be, so we'll. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Oh, I've no. never seen one of those. Yeah. That mouth is freaky. It looked like something out of Dune. I know. Yeah. I said it was Sandworm. the worm from Men in Black. If you ever saw that one, I think it was the second one. <laughs> that was in the subway. <laughs> How do you know it was its mouth, though? Okay, I consulted Google. <laughs> and <laughs> it, <laughs> as one does, as one does, um, and it looks like they're all like they're it's a clonal fish, fish, and it says unless all individual clones are killed at the same time, a colony can theoretically live forever, shrinking and growing based on available food and physical disturbance. Wow. Oh. Yeah. What are we talking about? This the pyrosome oh. I thing. I believe on a recent wow. Schmidt Ocean Institute. They saw like a crazy long pyrosome that was like a hundred meters long. A hundred oh. meters spiral. Whoa. I might be mixing wow. that up with a different organism, but I feel like it no, was a pyrosome. I, wow. I think or maybe it was insane. a xenophyophore. I can't remember now. Yeah, somebody just put in the uh, from who's watching. They said up to sixty feet long. Apparently, That's they did incredible. some research. Yeah, wow. there's shallow water ones. I've seen scuba divers next to some that are extremely long. We Bridge now. saw them on an SEA expedition coming out of New Zealand. Can we move five zero really? meters bearing towards zero Tahiti. eight five, so, please. Uh, I want to say it was Thank you. about midway between those two points, and pyrosomes that were bioluminescent on the surface, and they were about eight feet in diameter. Cool. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, they were like eight giant beach diameter? balls, just like roiling around oh in the water on wow. the no surface, way. and. As the boat like kind of cut through, it would it would disturb them, and so they would bioluminesce. Wow. And so then behind the ship was just this trail of giant glowing beach balls, like no that's way. so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. That's Where was this? Sorry, this was an expedition I was on on the SEA vessel, which was also in port when we were in Honolulu, oh. right behind us. That tall ship, oh, oh, cool. sailing wow. tall ship, uh, also a teaching platform. Magical. Yeah. It was magical. Oh, hello from Australia. Thanks for tuning in. What's the biggest animal you might encounter on this expedition? Uh, could be anything. We've seen some pretty giant sponges and things. Um, One of those hundred meter. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, right now, it might be a giant pyrosome. So stay tuned. Pyrosome. So far, it's probably been some sponges, some mm -hmm. big sponges. Huh? Yep. Pretty big sponges. It's really early or late in Australia, isn't it? I don't know. That? Time zone conversion right? Oh, it's early here. It's early here. I don't think it's that late. It's 1.40 a.m. in Australia. It's not early. Or some parts, so anyway. Ooh. Oh, this is a cool Adelina shot. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Someone said there was a huge swarm of pyrosomes that hit the west coast a few years ago, apparently. Yeah, Nautilus actually has a great video of that. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, uh, oh, ex Expedition 90-something. Yeah, you can Google, I think it's called, like, sea pickles or something like that. <laughs> Nautilus Ooh. sea pickles. I was looking at it recently before oh. <laughs> coming out to sea for a different purpose. Not to see pickles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trevor, they're like, yep, it's really late here in Sydney, but this stream is worth staying up for. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is that thing just sliding off to the right? The brown ball. Blup. We can have a zoom on that, please. Whoa. Mm. Pretty. Not what I expected. Yeah. Mm, pretty, yeah. Yeah. Is it kind, kind of, of that in that same yeah. vein of the Ursula a little yeah, bit? Yeah, right? That's what I was thinking, but the, the appendages look a little shorter. And they're not moving as and much. And they're not as wiggly. That was... Ursula was a tube anemone, so... Yep. I don't know. I I can only Point. guess. Yeah, it's an anemone. Okay, we can come wide. Thank you. Sure was pretty though. Mm -hmm. It was. So still relatively sparse and small animal life on this side. Steven, I have a question about cameras. Can uh, I ask you? Absolutely. But it shows how little I know. <laughs> so I I'm just prefacing that. I hope I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you, so when you zoom in, you have like great resolution and the video looks awesome. If you take a still of like this image right here and then you try and zoom in after the still is collected, do you still get that really good resolution? No. Okay. Because you're going to have the same amount of pixels in the image, whether it's zoomed in or zoomed out because we're doing an optical zoom, so the lens is what's mm, shifting the light. Whereas if you were to take a still of this and then zoom in later, you're just kind of doing what we'd call a digital zoom. So you're just looking closely, more closely at the pixels. Um, yeah, if that makes any sense. Got it, okay, yeah. thank you. But we've got, you know, 1,920 pixels wide and 1,080 pixels tall. Um, whether we're zoomed in or zoomed out. Oh, somebody sent in some additional information about the pyrosome bloom. Um, they were saying in 2017, uh, pyrosomes were observed to have spread in unprecedented numbers along the Pacific coast of North America as far as Alaska. Causes are unknown, or the cause is unknown, but one hypothesis is that the bloom may have resulted in part from unusually warm water along the coast over several years. Can and we, uh, Trevor, is it possible to get a partial on that Ooh, over to the right? Yeah, the leggy one, or whatever. Go ahead and zoom there, please. I'm going to make a guess that it's primnoid, but I'm not sure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Seems like a larger specimen Any than we've seen in a this? while. A follow-up to that question about cameras. If you have a cell phone, it probably doesn't have an optical zoom lens. So if you zoom with your fingers on your phone, that's um, a digital zoom. That's a digital zoom. So it doesn't matter whether you take a wide photo and then zoom in later or zoom in and then take the photo. You're going to get the same quality. Okay, thank you. That's what I was wondering. Are there any phones with optical zoom? Not that, I, not that I've come across. Uh, I know some... The, oh, I think whoa, that's why that? the 
the, I, oh, the new phones have multiple fan. lenses. We're good. Okay. Because it's going. easier to put multiple lenses in the phone than Bridge to have nav. one lens that can zoom. Right. Oh, interesting. We'll want to get some can we move uh, five zero meters partial zooms on the sponge zero with the lasers, lasers off, please. Lasers off, Thank Roger. You. Lasers off. I got it. It's a pretty sponge. sponge. Off, right? I got it. Okay. Go ahead, zoom. Have most of the sponges we've been encountering been glass sponges, or has we've it been like a big? We've also been demo sponges. Okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess I meant more of the big white ones. I feel like we keep coming across. Oh, but then I guess we came across the yellow one not too long ago too. Yeah. Thanks. Thank we can come wide. I'm not exactly sure what that was. If it was euplectilid or rosalia. A resident sponge expert. Still with Puppy. You can see the ridge. We're on the top of it now. Drops off to the right and the oh. left. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, look at that. And it's going to get overall narrower as we proceed northeast. That looks steep to the right over on the other side of this. Yeah. Like, huge drop off, it looks like. Wouldn't want to fall down that. Zoom in, please, Steve. There's your Victor Gorgia. Yep. Nice and colors there. Paragorgia. Love. Little purple surprise for Beth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Can we get a um, um, a closer zoom on the yellow one, please? Yeah. Go ahead. Zoom in. Oh, and we've got our gray demo sponge in the background. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure do. And the cobwebs. And yeah. couple yeah. Of interesting little low colony. Okay, you can come wide. Okay, come I halfway think that'll there, be Steve. good for our taxonomist. Do you know what type of coral that yellow one is? Not off the top of my head. I'm trying to trying to give us vertigo, Trevor. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a plexard. Thank you. You can come wide. Look at this little dense, oh. small area. Oh, yeah. Very dense. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, my That's goodness. Fine. Looks like confetti out there on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> So this is a delayed update, but that anemone that we saw, mm -hmm. little sort of brownish maroon perhaps, was not a tube anemone. Mm -hmm. It was a pom-pom anemone, oh. anemone pom -pom. named yes. a liponema. Pom-pom. Oh. Pom -pom. Yeah, pom-pom. Love it. Just kind of fun to say also. It really is. Oh, there's a lot going on on that like sort of cliff rock thing to the right. Look at that, there's a lot going on over there. 
That was from Asako. Antina. Yeah, lots of different corals yeah. here. Wow. And some sponges. Look at this. This is where the party's at over here. Can we get a closer on the brown one here? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, zoom. And let's definitely get some stills of all these high density. This might be a good spot to take an eDNA, which we haven't taken very many. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay. Crew Great call. Please. Get and this position. is one of the highest okay. densities that I've seen That would so be far. Niskin 3, Niskin, Niskin three. 3. Roger that. Nope. Asako, I'm not sure if we should Thank be you. thankful or sorry that we're keeping you awake because we're seeing so many nice <laughs> things. Asako is one of our scientists ashore, experts tuning in and helping us with a animal identification, I believe from Japan. Niskin 3. So right now we're setting up to take a water sample. And this is going to be used for uh, an environmental DNA survey that's being done. Uh, done. Do and yeah, I'm good. Uh, the idea here is to use environmental DNA as a tracer for the types of organisms in the environment to compare to what we're seeing visually. Thank you for that quick on the draw water sample. Yeah, no problem. And a really nice large yellow crinoid there. Yeah, That's huge, beautiful. Yeah. Almost larger than the corals. I think there's another plexoroid in the background here if we have a chance to look at it. Can you remind me what the plexoroid is? Uh, it's a type of coral. Okay, I can't. I don't yeah. know which one we're looking at. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to point at over here. This one, yeah, Roger that. Yellow. I think it's what it is. Okay, zoom in there, please. Oh, quick question. So this one's wondering. So yes, follow up on. We just took an eDNA sample. Can you go a bit more. And. Um, no, we have never, or there hasn't ever been any eDNA samples taken in this area because it's the first time it's ever been explored. That looks like zoanthids. Yeah, it kind of does look like zoanthids attached to another mm. coral. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll see what our scientists ashore have to say. Thank you. Okay, come wide. A little bit of that gray sponge there too on which side of the crack. Yeah. Bridge now. Tiny, tiny bit. Demo sponge. Can we yep. move five zero meters bearing zero seven zero, please? Thank you. Yeah, All Trevor, right. Tina is confirming what you just said, that that was a coral overgrown by a zoanthid. Cool, there's a oh, big, the big fish. fish. Oh, oh. We do big a guy. Snap zoom on them. Here we go. Lasers oh, up. look at that pattern. Whoa. Or is it? Oh, no, I think yeah. that's uh, yeah, I think worms. Some, yeah, I think it's worms. He's <gasps> no, sort of parasites. Parasite. Yeah. No. That is a... Stay strong, big guy. You got it. Yeah, all right. Some Whoa, type of annelid? Okay. Okay. So we're starting to see fish a little more frequently as we're coming up above 1,500 meters. all over the rock there. In what way? The corals or the whites or the dusty bits? Sort of that <laughs> larger light gray patch there in the upper yeah. starboard. Go ahead and zoom in on that gray patch, please. Just kind of, that's what you're talking about, this zone? Yeah. Well, there's a sea star. Yeah, it's a little star there. Is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, it looks like hmm, something. I think it's just sediment. Yeah. 
Okay. Goo. Goo. <laughs> yeah, we can come out. Okay. Benthic goo. Thanks for the waypoint on the sample, Lynette. You're welcome. More of a ship life question. Uh, being inside the control room, is seasickness ever an issue? Uh, well, it depends. Everyone's different, but I think the control van is one of the highest points in the ship, so you definitely can feel uh, the rocking and swaying a bit more than a lot of other places on board, so possibly, but everybody kind of handles seasickness differently. Partial zoom on this potential flexard here, please. If the seas are really rough, that might mean that we're not diving. Mm -hmm. So Thank we're you. not spending so much time Come in on. the control van. That's true, too. But it's also nice to have something to really put your full attention to. Yeah. And distract you from the motion sometimes. Unless and you're an SEF, even if we're not diving, we're in here in the studio. That's <laughs> true. Point. That's true. We're always in here. That's well, a good sea point. star. <laughs> To dispel a myth that, oh, I don't get seasick, someone says. No, every single person gets seasick. Every person just has a different threshold. Mm. Sometimes it takes really insane seas to make a certain person seasick, but I guarantee you they will get seasick at some point. Can we get another partial mm. zoom on this yeah, leggy sure. feature? All right, zoom in, please. Little cup coral with it. Something in the front, too. Yeah. A little anemone or something. All right, thank you. Yep, thanks. Um, how long do we usually stay down for with the ROV? Uh, it depends on the dive. Um, this one has been the longest so far, so we've had a lot of time on bottom. I think shortest dives are on the order of 10 minutes. The longest dives are, longest dive Herc's done is 74 hours. Whew, that is long. And Argus alone did a over 100 hour dive. Was Argus just taking video of things, or what was Argus doing? Yeah, video and side scan. Mm. Was that when we were looking for the Simone Clipper? That's right, yeah. Which was an airplane wreck from Did the 30s, I believe. Oh, that sounds cool. Did you find it? Negative. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we shall. <laughs> What is a side scan? That sounds like a question for Lynette. Uh-oh. <laughs> what, what is a side scan? I don't know. Uh, I don't know that much about side scan. Um, <laughs> it's a sonar. Yeah, it is a sonar. Um, so uh, I know a bit more about multi-beam. That's what I work with mostly. Um, it's a way of imaging the seafloor. Um, side scan works a little bit differently. Um, usually you tow it behind a ship. Um, so being on a platform like Argus or Atalanta is great. Um, it helps to be a bit lower, closer to the seafloor. Um, and it gives you a very uh, wide, a cross-track view of the seafloor. So if you're looking for something like a wreck, um, it's really helpful because um, you can get a really wide swath, a really wide view with it. Cool, thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna go down to another little tiny saddle, looks like.
Yeah, it looks like um, we're still in a spot with a relatively gradual terrain, and as we move to the northeast, it's going to start getting steep based on what we see in high pack. Bridge nav. I'm really. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero five zero, please? Thank you. Walteria sponges are just brilliantly white. Mm -hmm. You can see them from so far away. Little beacons. Someone's wondering, could the eDNA analysis find out if there are undescribed species in the area? That's one of the, sort of one of the points that eDNA is used for, Beth. Yeah. Without Can having be. to actually go down and scoop up things. It could certainly help us identify mm -hmm. that there might be species that we haven't seen. It gives us like a nice characteristic of the community. Mm -hmm. It's one of the great benefits of the eDNA. Yeah, sort of like a watery footprint a little bit. Yeah, like if you took a slurp of this room right now, it would have <laughs> little bits of all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So. And maybe bits of other people who were in here before us. Right. Which is sort that of point, yep. What is that? Oh, it's fish. A couple of fish off to the right. Water is a bit cloudier here again in the saddle. Front row folks are wondering, do you complete a decontamination of the ROVs between dives? I know it gets sort of washed off, but does like any particular soap or chemicals or anything go on it, or just pretty much fresh water? Fresh water rinse, yeah. We want to minimize the use of detergents mm -hmm. whenever possible around here, so we just give it a very thorough rinse while we're still in the same area that we got any potential contaminants that rinses overboard. So it's freshly washed for the next dive. Can we get a look at this um, rock feature to our left? Yeah, absolutely. Like a little stack of pancakes. <laughs> oh, pancakes. Oh, oh, oh right man, you oh, have to bring up pancakes. pancakes. Uh -huh. <laughs> no breakfast, talk till seven. <laughs> Anybody could take a bio break. There's some on the table in there. <laughs> there are oh, they're all, they're all the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks, Trevor. Look at Lots that. of little things like bottom, underneath. Yeah, there. bottom right there. I don't have quite enough scope yet, but we're going that way anyway. Yeah, a lot of them. Wow. Can we get a, Ooh, also a partial on this one up here? Yeah, we can. I think we saw that on the last uh, Go ahead, zoom. rock outcropping. Ooh, and look what's happening in the bowling ball. That <laughs> Oops, coming in. 
little lobster. Yeah, little, little baby tiny. lobster. Mm. Okay, thank you. Was that a black coral? Trying to figure that out. Roger. Whether it's that or a primnoid, or a plexarid, sorry. TBD. TBD. Asako mm -hmm. thinks it's a black coral. <laughs> Staropathies. I don't think we've seen too many of those yet on this shift. I wonder what's on this fish's tail. Oh, that looks like a long has a very long um, tail. And very very flashy like on the end. Can we get lasers off? Yeah, lasers going off. Does it have any fins? Is it an eel? Jeez. Is it an eel? No. You can zoom. Oh. Oh, a little shrimp. <gasps> hey, Ooh. bye. Oh. Is that a oh, no, there's like tiny little at the front. Oh, it doesn't oh. like us very much. Yeah, no, leave him alone. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> It like kind of looked like a Synaphobranchus eel. Can I please get a reset? Yep. And yeah, we can get lasers back. Yeah, lasers. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Someone said maybe that was a cutthroat eel. I'm not sure. Just a little noteworthy current change. It's kind of heading uh, 330 now instead of you know, exactly the opposite of that. So right, it's so it's pushing, pushing you behind the ship. It's pushing me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's North. probably coming up that knife said ridge here to our east and just pushing you back. Totally, but like 300 meters, it was pushing, 300 meters ago, it was pushing me south. Yeah. So kind of a good, almost 180 there. Yeah. Well, it's probably coming up that ridge from both sides and then getting confused in that saddle. Oh, these again. Uh, I'm good, thank you. Thank you. There's desalination processing on board the ship, correct? Yep. Yes. Yes. That's yes. where so we get our fresh water. Yes. So we do not just bring it all from shore. <laughs> um, there is, uh, we do have a desalination process on board the ship. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero six five, please? Thank you. I'm wondering if we want to pull the ship a little bit further to the east since it seems the current's pulling us back. What do you think? Uh, do you want mm, yeah maybe something maybe like that eight five yeah okay. Okay. yeah a little bit more east okay bridge nav can we cancel that last move and go five zero meters bearing zero eight five 
Thank you. Where did these come from? Ooh, someone has a wet lab question. Um, they said one of the sample containers, maybe I think it was from the slurp, uh, brought in was milky white, like milk of magnesia. Yeah, what that was taken out of the, uh, I think it was a sponge? That yeah, we took a slurp <laughs> of a sponge, so um, it did disintegrate slightly. It was a glass sponge, mm -hmm. and uh, we did have some nice pieces that were, oh gosh, uh, 15 centimeters long or so. Oh, but yeah, nice. um, uh, those are just lots of bits of that sponge sample. Got it. Yeah. Which is now preserved. Awesome. Did it sort of get all broken up because of the way it was slurped or because of the pressure or? Uh, probably because of the slurping action is my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a mesh in the slurp canisters, correct, Trevor? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so anything we collect has to go through a, a large oh. mesh. So Well, oh, well n the mesh stops it from leaving. Oh, okay. It's Never a two-inch hole the whole way. And if it's smaller than, I think we have one millimeter mesh in there. Mm -hmm. If it's smaller than that, then it gets pushed out the back of the vehicle. Hmm. So it doesn't go through it. Yeah, right. Okay. That was my bad. Right, if it goes through it, then it's out the other end. All right, just checking. Oh, there's something swimming up above us in Herc's can. Ooh, swimming. swimming. Another oh, chimera. chimera. The chimera. Lasers off, please. Lasers off. Oh, that's a fast one. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. It's getting on out of the way. Okay, you can put lasers back on. Is someone whistling? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was looking for that fish. I apologize. That was her thinking whistle. What a thing. <laughs> The wheels were a turning, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Seen any rocks, Beth, that you want to pick up for either you or Val? No. Not yet? Uh, I do not want another rock sample for my work until we get much shallower. Gotcha. Okay. Good uh, to know. It's another fish ahead of you. Mm. I wonder if it's above me. Oh. Yeah, that could just be fish shadow too. It's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah, Ooh, totally. the shadow of a fish. Yeah, Ooh, spooky. Yeah. spooky. This is almost mm -hmm. as good as nesting with the devil. Oh, gosh, <laughs> <laughs> the shadow of a fish. So if you look in the Atlanta cam, you can see that there's a fish oh, yeah. just above the herd. Just above yeah. you. Eerie. <laughs> How big does biology have to be to no longer classify as micro? Oh. Um, generally, if you can see it with your eyes, it's no longer microscopic. Okay. Um, but it's a loose definition. Oh, it looks like we might have an actual bony fish in front of us. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Let's check that out. I think we've seen this fish we before. We have seen that guy. The tail is very distinct. I remember it. I'll try and paint him with lasers right at the start, and then we can ditch them. All right. Be ready. There's to how big the fish is. All right. Killing them. Okay, zoom in, please. It's interesting. The fish, I'm getting the sense they're reacting to the lasers going off. Oh, if it's, interesting. I don't know if it's interesting. an oh. electric thing. 
Or maybe that's what they're drawn to in the first place. It's so much more concentrated. Mm. I've definitely seen fish chase lasers before. Like cats. And we've, yeah. se we've <laughs> seen with eels that they sometimes react more to the zoom of the lens. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's more fascinating. The high like pitch the sound. Of, the, yeah. Yeah. of the actuator. So I wonder if there's something about the lasers. Next time, everyone watch out for it. See if you see what I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's turn the lasers back I on. See. All right. I think we identified that previously as the Moridae antimora. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yeah, somebody also just put in who's watching and said antimora, so maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure what species, but yeah. that's the genera. Do you want to keep moving to the east or <laughs> sort of northeast here, Beth? Uh, you can, yeah, northeast is fine. Okay. Um, with the current pushing Herc behind the ship, I think that'll be a good trajectory. <laughs> Look at that corkscrew on that bamboo coral. This is, of course, assuming that the <laughs> current is going to stay consistent. Bridge Nav, Star. Oh, yeah. Do we care about that star? No, go ahead. But no, can we move five zero Aww. meters bearing zero five zero, please? Thank you. Definitely seeing more fishes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this vicinity. For sure. 1,480 meters. Although our oxygen concentration is relatively low. Yeah. Interesting. Only about 27 micromolar. There was a discourse in our science chat about fish and oxygen earlier. Something swimming yeah. right there. A little something. A little orange something. <laughs> shrimp? Yeah, a little a shrimp. shrimp. Mm, someone's asking. Oh yeah, why it's too why it's important or why have two ROVs in the water? To my knowledge, it's sort of eye in the sky for Atlanta over Hercules, and also helps keep Herc sort of stable. And I'll I'll let Ashton um, expand <laughs> if she wants. Uh, yeah, I think you explained it pretty well, Shelby. But. Um Atalanta or Argus can also absorb a lot of the ship's movements um, and allow Hercules to do that kind of fine-tuned work down on the bottom. Uh, it's also got a number of cameras and lights, and so that helps out. Um, sometimes there's also a, a, an extra sonar in use on it. Trevor, is it possible to bring Herc off bottom a little bit and kind of pan around so we can see sure thing. how the terrain is looking? Let's do a look left to start off with. A little bit upslope that way. Oh, bless you. And we'll look right. Looks like there sediment? might be sediment yeah. up ahead of us. Ooh. Yeah, like let's head towards the sediment a little bit. Or is it just sheep flow? Yeah, it's hard to tell from this far. Yeah, maybe Looks it's just like a sheep flow. Oh, wow. Big 
another pan flat sheet, yeah, type situation. Yeah. Very sheetly. Mm -hmm. So what makes the difference between these like flat sheets and then the rubble below it? Is it when it's forming right. or is it it's after? about the lava conditions when they come out of the seafloor. Um, so yeah, how hot it is, how much gas is in it, the composition determines whether you have flows that are like eruptive or if they just kind of ooze out onto the seafloor. Val would give you a much better description than I am, but that's generally what it is. And does Same that on land, right? So if you yeah. go to a volcano, there's different types, different names for the types of lava that you see. Um, uh, I think ah is one, pu'o'o'a maybe. I'm getting these wrong, maybe. Uh, Ipo knows some of these terms, I'm not sure. But yeah, so on land, there's different types of names for lava flows depending on the composition of the the lava as it's coming out and how pretty, it moves. Pretty robust. Doesn't yeah, break that's a easily. big old yeah, that's sheet. Yeah, a thick sheet. <laughs> Try to just bump it with the bumper there and see if it would crumble or if it's yeah, solid. It's like, and it, uh, is, it is solid. We've been asked in the past to try to break a edge of the ledge off, and mm. it's using the manipulator, and it's usually not possible. You think, oh, it looks really, you know, it's already broken around the edge. Ahoy, ahoy, how, there how we much, go. Uh, how is it? Effort would it take to break more off, and it's usually pretty tough. Fishy. <laughs> um, and is that the haloclastite? Somebody's wondering, and not basalt. Hmm. Might uh, be a vowel question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's it's something. That's to do with the composition. So if it's more of a higher silica content, uh, um, I don't know that you can necessarily tell that from how it looks. Was that one of our bingo words from last night? Hyaloclastite. <laughs> Hyaloclastite. I, I have a hard time saying that one. <laughs> I don't know, but pillow lava should definitely be on the card. That should have been the format of the wish list. Instead of just a list, it should have been a wish bingo card. <laughs> oh, wish bingo. <laughs> Lynette, what's our distance to waypoint eight? One, two, five meters. All right. So it seems that Herc's coming back towards the ship a little bit. Not pulled out as far, maybe. So maybe we wanna, the next ships move a little more north. Sure. It's hard to say. Maybe something like zero four zero. Sure, let's try that. Okay. What chemicals are responsible for the various colors on the corals? That's an interesting question. I'd like to know that. It I don't know if it's genetic. It may not just be color. It could also just mm -hmm. be Bridge, nav. structure mm -hmm. within the tissue. Can we move mm -hmm. five zero meters bearing zero four zero, please? Thank you. 
Yeah, because oftentimes the color, mm -hmm. you don't see it when you recover it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you say you don't usually see the color when you recover it? Sometimes the color goes away. Oh. Sometimes it comes out uh, when you preserve it. <laughs> that Interesting. Too. Yeah. Okay. So it's not all the same for every coral. Yeah. That's why the in situ photos are so helpful for the identification. Because right. once it's in the archives, sometimes that color is lost. Yeah, a lot of times it comes out if we preserve it in ethanol or formalin, it'll degrade the color. So we're coming up on some interesting pillow features again, mm -hmm. um, and we're getting close to waypoint eight. So Trevor heads up that we might want to try to collect a rock sample opportunistically. Roger. Maybe, um, I mean, obviously not right here because <laughs> it's all looks very yes. attached. Uh, but let's just keep our eyes open for areas where we think we might be able to grab a sample. Okay. Yeah. Is this pretty steep? Looks we're going up something steep. It's pretty steep. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, oops. About, to, about to top out here. And then we will get a reward at the top, a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming up on something. Yeah. Typically, our rock rewards are actually at the bottom, but we'll be OK. <laughs> couple of somethings. Here's Just a, a heads metals. up, it's we can't collect something too large. It's going to have to go in one of the smaller starboard, starboard bio boxes. Roger. So. Just thoughts to keep in mind. That's a good reminder. Oh, another yellow like one. Oh, the oh, bolosoma. The bolosoma. Dang, Ooh. it's so bright. Yeah. It's neon. Ugh. I wonder what that would look like if you brought it up, if it would stay yellow. I'm so curious Unclear. to know. Little thing down there. So now we know the water is coming this way, like sort of the direction that we're from right to left, right, swimming. Yeah, oh, well, there's that other top exhaust part. Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the exhaust vent, <laughs> the <Yeah>. exhaust vent. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, can we get the lasers off? Yeah, Roger. Look at it in relation to Hercules. That's pretty large. Yeah. Yeah. Some brittle oh, stars. Oh yeah, that's a great. There. Wow, that's just like family reunion brittle stars. <laughs> <in> there, like <laughs> that's a lot. Of it. It's yeah. Easter down there too. I know. Oh, Easter okay. dinner. Everybody gather. So are the brittle star? Oh, there. Are the brittle stars feeding off the water? Things in the water that come through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. There's some bamboo coral whips here in the background. Also, oh, some of our stocked crinoids are also here. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen one of those in a long time. Man, I feel um, like I would really For anybody like watching time. from home, we have about another five or so hours on the bottom before we recover, uh, I believe. Thanks to our scientists ashore for tuning in and helping us with animal identifications. I have the yellow stalked crinoid as a hyocrinid. Okay. From last night. Yeah, Just a reminder. Look at how that bamboo coral is wiggling. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to you too, Ben. <laughs> Dance like no one's watching. Oh yeah. Lasers back, please. Oh, yep. <laughs> Maybe it sees the bathy pathies in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the rock over there on the left? A little dustiness. Yeah, that patch. Uh, right in the lasers yeah. now. All right, zoom in there, please. Mm, 
Looks it's like stolen Ephraim. I think. Something. Can we come wide just a yeah. little bit to see the things in the background? Right, background. right. Oh, so nice. yeah, we've got, it looks like a Plexarid, yellow, maybe a heavy Coralid in the background. I can't quite tell. Thank you. All right. What, what is, oh, sorry. That little slug thing? What's the little thing right here? Something's what popping thing? up behind there. Eh, sorry, I got unstable there. Uh, just in front of this oh, coral. Oh, that's brown. Yeah, going more there. like. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Looks like uh, a mollusk. It's not easy to tell. I think it's a barnacle. I'm huh. not sure. Weird. Unclear. Unclear. Yeah, we might need Indeed. to come around from a different angle to see it. Yeah, come out a little bit, Steve. Good there. That's thin. Yeah. 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 Okay, you can try to push in there, see if I can hold it. Oh, oh. maybe it's a snake. What is that? What? Oh. Oh, it has like little... Is it a chitin? Chitin? It's like lifted up. I think up. it's a yeah. chitin lifted up. Oh, oh, wild. Okay. Never seen underneath one. Yeah. Is All it right. like on its side? Pretty like breezy <laughs> here. Okay, uh, I'm going to move along. Thanks. Oh, there's a chonky sea star on the left. Oh, I saw just it. Out oh, just right out of view. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, but we gotta <laughs> keep moving. On this little peak, it seems like we're seeing very similar to Waypoint 7 on that knoll where it's kind of like confetti-like with lots of small organisms. I wonder if any of these rocks might be suitable for picking up. Do we think we have time for that? I think so, yeah. Okay. Let's maybe hold on a ship's move, Lynette. Okay. Do you want me to stop the ship? Yeah, go ahead and stop the ship, okay. just so we can poke around here a little bit. Yeah, Let's I can do bridge that. Bridge now. Thank you. Can we hold position huh? here, please? Thank you. Bring this around to the stars. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you for some reason. Is another pom pom an enemy? Oh yeah. Oh right. nice. Yeah. Good Just eye. Off to the left of the lasers. Lipo. We can zoom in on that real quick. Name one. What's it? Yeah, same one. Yeah. yeah. Pom -pom. Oh yep. Yeah. Pom pom. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the blue button, which is actually not a blue button. It's just a button beside a blue light. All right. Okay, you can get the minip out in front so that we're ready to go when the time comes. I'm going to keep moving forward just to stay in the right spot. Okay. Now, Beth, are you looking for angular, We rounded? are looking for angular and relatively small, because it has to go in one of the small starboard bio boxes, uh, starboard box yeah, slots. Yeah, roger that. But yeah, and we're trying to get something that maybe looks like it's broken off a pillow, but we'll see. Looks like there might be some good candidates here. I 
So just let me know when you're in a good place to set up and we can start zooming and poking. Yeah, we're just getting the minute mm -hmm. boat. So Ashley, yep. if you can bring okay. that into the Herc Zeus view. Yeah. Ashton, no pressure, but we're all watching your hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no pressure at all. I'm getting uh, situated here. Might be a slow sample. There's the arm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what about one of these just to the left of the lasers? What, either this one or down a little bit more. This one. Those two lasered ones. Either one of those okay? Yeah, this one so might be a good to try. Keep them in the vehicle. Okay. Just on top of the white sponge? Yeah, just above the white sponge. Okay. Maybe that one. Okay, now you can go for a grab. Okay. This one right under the lasers? Right here. Ah. Uh, Just farther away than the sponge. Okay. Give me one sec. I'm messing up too because I'm live flying this, so I'm going to move a little bit. Oh, nope, thank you. Nice one. You Ooh, got it. Get there. I think I have that. Nope. Jinx yourself. <laughs> Shoot. They are loose, though. Was it yeah, this they're one? loose. Yeah. That's good. That one, correct. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> we are wiggling. Yeah. Okay, well, can we recalibrate it's this just hard mode for you. arm for a second. Get a little more. A little more scope. More scope. Okay, actually, why don't you get out of there? I'll just land. This is. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Sorry. Come full double wide, Steve. Get arm out of there. Okay, getting the arm out. Uh, sorry, I have to... All right, I'm landed. Okay, thank Go you. Go ahead now. I'm a little slow with that. Let me get my scope fixed. Okay. Steve, can you please come wide on Atalanta? Thank you. This is the ultimate claw game. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Trevor you makes this it. look easy. <laughs> 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 Come on, you're mine. There you go. All right, can we nice get one. some glam? Sh oh, oh. oh. <laughs> grip lock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got it once you can get I it again. I thought I had it locked. <laughs> there we go. Gosh. Okay. Oh my goodness! I think I buried it, guys. So it's, it's okay. The one just to the right of the sponge. Right? Let's, right there. let's wait and see okay. what we're doing so we can yeah, try so to not damage the sponge. Make sure you rotate the jaws right now so you don't okay. squeeze that sponge. Yeah. Okay. Nice slow taps on that. Uh, just slow presses okay. on the rocker. Thank Instead you. Of the quick taps. All right. Sorry, Beth, sponge. how would you describe that rock? I. It's too soon to say. Give me okay. a moment. Yep. And we don't even know if we're keeping it yet. Yay, Ashton! Kay. There Yay. we go. Oh, please keep it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Good. Nice, nice slow, slow rotations, and then pauses. So, dang, can take. Can we get a closer zoom on it before we? Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going around Great. a little bit. Looks like it has a little bit of a crust, but hopefully it's got some original rock in there, too. Hard to say. Okay. Do you want to keep it? Yeah, let's keep that one. Then it's okay. going to go in Charlie, starboard box Charlie. Anything floaty over there? There yes. is a floaty in uh, Foxtrot. Floaty in Foxtrot. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so can you get the arm just a little more yeah. out of there? And then I'm going to do a little quick move, and then just to get more caught up with Atalanta. I think we'll be okay, but I don't want to risk it. So bring that elbow down. Your elbow's quite high right now. Okay, elbow yeah. coming and down. And always keep the manip in view of the cameras for, for as long as possible. Okay. All right, 
Nice. Let me do a little hold and I'll expand my scope and I can tuck in more. There we go. Okay, if you halt there for now, I can do a quick yeah. move with the vehicle. Halting. And now when, this is info for you and viewers at home, when there is a floaty thing on the starboard side, I secure the thrusters on that side so there's minimal water flow over there. So, especially nice. if we're going to be putting it more inboard than the outboard one. If we open Pandora's box and there's a lot of water flow, then it'll just eject. But it also means I need to land and get really stable because I turn off thrusters. Thanks for your patience with my rock collecting. I'm glad I didn't just destroy that sponge in front of everyone. No, <laughs> great. It's, it's good. It survived. Especially, you did great, especially under pressure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Venus flytrap type. Those flytraps oh, wow. are so cool. So cool. It's so big too. Mm -hmm. Is that it's one huge. of the flytrap things? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's another one right below the arm. Someone's asking, what information can you take from rocks? A bunch, but this one in particular is for micro mineral? No. Or is uh, it for Val? We are interested in trying to understand the origin of these seamounts. Mm. And the way that we figure that out is by analyzing the geochemistry and isotopes and things like that from the rocks. Um, and for that, we need rocks that are relatively unaltered since when they were emplaced on the seafloor. So things that are not fractured and crumbly and things like that. And that's what we have been trying to collect. OK. Um, would you like me to pause for a second and increase our delta? Or you got it? Okay. Thanks. All right. So follow the arm around. <laughs> Wrist up, shoulder around. This is my blind spot. Oh, thank you. And I see it coming around on the core camera there. Okay. Headed for Charlie. Let me increase my scope. Okay. And which one are we aiming for? Charlie. Charlie. Starboard Sorry, Charlie. you guys have said it so many times. Thanks. It's okay. Okay. Am I, um, let me see. Yes, I'm trying to approach it from not this angle, right? <laughs> from more like straight on to the long edge of the box. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can kind of. Yeah. I see what you mean. Like, okay. Thank you. Oh yeah. Okay. How does the setup look? It looks good. I would bring the elbow up higher and wrist pitch down and that allows that wrist yaw to roll into the box from above. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Ah, more like that? Yeah. 
Because think of how you would put it with your hand. You wouldn't you wouldn't flop into the box. You'd probably <laughs> place it in. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So you want to be able to do that motion, which means you need to elbow up and wrist pitch down. Okay. That allows your wrist yaw to work in that other axis. Okay. It's kind of hard to. It's hard to understand what to do from words alone. Yeah. But that move right there. That little wiggle. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you're getting the right idea. <laughs> All right. So Let's the, put a rock in a box, okay. world. You want to want to be a little farther aft <laughs> still, trying to get you right above the box so that we can just drop it immediately. Okay. So that'll involve a lot more elbow up. A lot more elbow up. Yeah, there you go. That'll oh, count. Okay. Line the coconut. Nice. Ah, I see. <laughs> Yeah, that's pr oh, that's looking really good there. And if you shoulder down a bit, you'll be right above the box. Uh, cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fine. I really is building a picture with with two weird looking eyes. Here, if you weird. if you pause just a sec, I'll make those bigger for you. Yeah. Oh, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Make those bigger for you. There we go. Thanks. Okay. It's made it hard. All right. And of course, I won't be opening the box and if you're not above the push course. Uh, I understand that. Let me see if I can re-index a little. To mm -hmm. <laughs> you're getting the right idea, though. Okay. Thanks, everybody. This is not. <laughs> you're doing great. No stress. Uh. Okay. That's that's lovely wrist angle. Now if you if you get above the box, then we'll open it up. Let me go that way. That way. And is that elbow shoulder? How do I get up? How do you you want to go all this over there? Uh Okay, I think I need more scope. Yeah, that's all right hand action. That helps. I might need more practice on this. <laughs> okay. Okay, care if you're getting a little, little inboard there. Okay. And that is left hand action. So to lower the shoulder and raise the elbow is all your right hand. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I might need more practice with this. It's been a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give it another minute or two and then okay. you can, we can trade out if you want. Yeah, I might need another run through of what these motions are. Yeah, especially in the different cameras, it's a... It's a weird game. Okay, so that's that one. Everyone's rooting for you, Ashton, in the world. They're like, you're doing <laughs> great! Oh, yeah. There's so much pressure right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're good. No, you're we're not here. You got it. Yeah. Am I above the box okay? Yeah, you're a little bit inboard. Okay. And you're a little bit so forward, but you're getting closer. A little bit forward, a little bit. So, so move outboard and move aft. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, pause that, re-index that way, mm -hmm. that way. It's very hard with these cameras right now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's not quite as deluxe as the Zeus bus. No. Okay. I'm not sure. If you want to line this up, Trevor, you're welcome to. Okay. I don't want to waste I'll try and talk too much through, time. I'll try and show you what I was talking about, too. That sounds good. Yeah, maybe it just. Yeah, next time you got it. <laughs> Thanks. So you're getting that wrist action totally correct. So I was talking this one, so you're able to yeah. drop it in the box that way. Uh huh. So that was awesome. And you were kind of getting stuck back here and you want to move aft so watch my for me it's my left hand okay i'm going to do this motion 
which puts the shoulder down and the elbow up at the same time. Okay. And watch how that affects the manip. So I'm just kind of moving aft there. Gotcha. Kind of floating the rock. And all I'm doing is shoulder down, elbow up at the same time. It keeps that same wrist pitch angle. Okay. And it's all in my, for me, my left hand, but for you, it'd be your right hand. Anyway, you, you'll get it next time. No problem. Thank you. Okay, can Thanks you please open everyone. the box? Yeah, of nice course. Nice job. Get in the box. Nice. Ooh. Okay, it looks good. Nothing floaty. Okay, you can close the box. Good work. That was an intense lesson. I was like, yeah. <laughs> on the edge of my seat. I was like, Throwing okay, right in it. elbow. Like, okay, I down. Think I, <gasps> <laughs> I don't think I've been breathing for quite a while now. It's honestly Sorry. impossible. No, you're good. Um, it's impossible to be like, if someone says wrist pitch up, you're, if you're using the arm, you have no idea what that means. That <laughs> those words don't correlate to motion at all. It's oh <laughs> I know what a wrist is in real life, I promise. <laughs> Great you. job, Ashton. Yeah, All fantastic. <laughs> armchair quarterbacks with their own arms at home. <laughs> like, it's this one. <laughs> it's a, it's amazing, eh? It's a, you look at it, you're like, well, I just want the thing to do this. How do you make them do it? It's, 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 it's unreal. So, Lynette, I think we want to do like Thank a 45-degree ship move. We don't necessarily need to go directly to waypoint A. We can just keep going up the ridge. Okay. You ready for a move? Okay. Bridge nav. Can we move five Front zero meters view, bearing zero four five, please? Thank you. Okay. Hope everybody learned a little something <laughs> about the Herc arm. Very cool training sesh. Let's see if we can get back to a couple questions. Steven, how's our sunrise view? Any any action out there? Love you. <laughs> Roger. I don't even realize it happens <laughs> sometimes. I catch myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Diane. <laughs> it's like any questionable noise, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Thanks. People are wondering. Um, do pilots practice when Herc is not in the water? I'm gonna say no. Is that dangerous? Obviously. It's it's yes and no. How about that answer? Okay. <laughs> uh, short answer is nope. There's no short answer. The short answer is yes and no. <laughs> yeah, when, they were practicing the other day on the yeah. deck. Yeah. So when you're first oh. learning, it's best to learn in the water. And after you got the kind of general controls figured out, and you're more l working on fine tuning. Mm -hmm. the maneuvers, mm -hmm. then deck is a totally appropriate place to to uh, practice. Nice. There's a fish swimming over the rock in our bottom right hand frame oh, of the Kirk. Oh, oh, something oh. floaty just nice floated high. by. <laughs> so, yeah, that was right. That's Paul was another uh, Argus intern several years ago and has been coming back as a contractor since. And uh, he was fine tuning. Can we tuning get a partial zoom on this? Yeah, totally. Let's zoom in I'm trying here, to see Ooh, if it's some coral livery or just random. Looks like it's already been damaged, and the brittle star just happens to be there. Okay, thanks. You can come wide. All right, thanks. 
Yeah, so Paul is working on fine-tuning his motor skills by trying to balance a tennis ball on top of a traffic cone. <laughs> which is really, really hard. Yeah, I think I saw that the other day. Another stocked yellow crinoid there. So I'm not gone. I don't think I can balance a tennis ball on a traffic cone as a regular human, let alone with an ROV arm. Well, it just <laughs> means put the put the ball on top of the cone as the cone's sitting on the deck. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Beth, can you see the high pack screen? Yes. Uh, what kind of path do you want to take up to waypoint nine? You want to try to hit these sort of yes nodes, I guess. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And it seems that Herc is kind of settled, not being pushed back as far. Yeah. Although that might change Currently as we get the ship's moves. Currently. <laughs> right. So. It is sunrise, a bit cloudy. Yeah. Yeah. But at least we're not moving so much. Yeah. Much calmer today. Yeah. Can we get a partial zoom on the sponge? On the left, yep. Yep. I think it's the same one we've been seeing. Okay, Steve, go ahead. But interesting, again, this association of a coral on the sponge. Oh, wow. Our yeah. scientists ashore were commenting that they haven't really seen that a lot before. So if we could get a even tighter zoom yeah. to, to see that hold fast and you if it's actually in yep. the sponge. Let me come around the side here, see if I can see it. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's definitely on the sponge. Is it on or yeah. is That's it That's that same is sponge it? that we sampled, Ooh, I think. actually. Oh. Oh. Is it going around Speculous? the coral? That's what I was thinking, Shelby. Right? It's like the coral, coral was could there, have been there first, and yeah. then oh. sponge. And then was the like sponge goes around. We're it. sharing this space. That's as far as I got to the left. Okay, tiny little crab over here. Look oh, there's an under coral, because underneath the sponge. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah there's a Chrysogorgia under there. This was a coveted spot. I wonder yes. why. Okay, thanks. Good you question. can come on. Yeah, thanks. Makes okay. you wonder which grew. Did the sponge grow around it, or did the coral grow through it? I know. Yeah. Stephen and I Chicken think the sponge the grew around it. <laughs> That's our boat. <laughs> yeah, we could. I wonder if we could slice into it and see sometime if we see that again. I'd be into it. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd slice it. Yeah. Which it came first, the coral or the sponge? Yeah. Can we get some partial <laughs> zooms on these uh, oranges brown? Yep. Totally. Go ahead and zoom there. I think you could scrape away some sponge pretty easily. It's pretty crumbly, generally. So you could do it without damaging the what? coral or killing the some kind of debris. What is that? OK, you know. can come wide. Thanks. Looks rusty. Yeah. I think that's that sponge that they were um, sampling as we were at shift change with the like gold spicules. I didn't see that. Here's a fun question. It says, someone says, it seems like quite a few people on the cruise have done other jobs or roles on Nautilus. If you could try someone else's job role on Nautilus, what would you want to try? Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, I'd try mapping. Mm. A, B. I'm ready to fly Herc. What's <laughs> Did you say A, B, Trevor? Yeah. OK. I still can't believe nobody semen. wants to ship samples. I mean, I made it sound so glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> but all the work will be for waste hey. if you can't ship yeah. them after. I'd like to try working in the ship's galley. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. I feel like that's probably like a very stressful job. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's that's never hardest, ending. Hardest jobs, I guess. Oh my yeah. goodness. It does not end. I and wouldn't mind trying to be a captain, steering the ship, see how that works. Yeah, captain. I think the stressful part about being a cook wouldn't just be making the food. It's the happiness of every single person on board directly <laughs> depends on you. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's the planning too. Like, okay, what? Oh yeah, yeah. ordering for this many days and weeks. Yeah, this many days and weeks. Then you know, no one thawing, portioning, planning it out. The portion. Right. Right. Snap yeah. zoom on they, that they little one. Yeah, the, totally. They have to bring all the food up three ladders every zoom day. Zoom in, please. Oh. Oh, that's the fun part. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's just a little. Come yeah. wide. Thank you. you thanks. Can come wide. Note to people in the control van: If you ever see a, a milk crate full of food at the bottom of the stairs, <laughs> bring it into the galley for them. Help them out. Very appreciated. I have helped with like the um, when they actually get all the food at port, and then we have to bring it all in and sort it Stores. and put it up. It's mm -hmm. so fun. Yeah, everyone Bridge helps now. with that. I love that part. <laughs> I used to cook on fishing boats up Can in Alaska. Can we move five zero meters, bearing zero three five, please? And uh, at the beginning of the season, we would bring on about seven or eight complete fish totes. Wow. And wow. store it on board uh, for a three to four month season. Wow. And that was just like the dry goods, frozen goods. Mm. Right. Every now yeah. and then we'd come into port and grab freshies, but it was a massive job and just putting that stuff away. Yeah. Diane, you've done the coolest things. <laughs> you know coolest what things. it is, is I've done a smorgasbord of things. <laughs> I wonder if they let me see the giant refrigerator or freezer. Oh wow, look at all oh, the yeah. basket stars <laughs> attached to that. That's a whole mess of them. Yeah. Bamboo. Oh. Huh. You could go for a refrigerator tour, absolutely. <laughs> gonna ask. <laughs> I feel like they would totally show you their freezers. <laughs> Make sure I go put on my fuzzy socks and my everything <laughs> yeah. prepared. Uh, I don't know if it takes that long <laughs> to see the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing some shopping. i definitely seen Anatoly wear his big puffy jacket in there. Yeah, exactly. He's been in there sorting boxes though. So. Oh yeah. Can we get a partial on this yellow yes, stock stick? I'm not sure what it is. Stick stock. Stick stock? That reminds me of something. Annabelle, what are you planning for TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What's this on the stickstagram? Okay, zoom in, please. Huh? I think that's a stock from a sponge that doesn't no longer have a top. Oh. It's that Or maybe that crinoid? That yellow crinoid? Oh, it could have been a crinoid, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, you can come wide. Poor thing. It's a car antenna. Where's the head? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> getting punchy. <laughs> All right, everyone. All right, it's past 7 a.m. We can talk about breakfast now. All right, pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch isn't until 2 today, so make sure you eat a big breakfast. That's right, yeah. There is no lunch dinner, is oh. that too? Do you yeah. think they have grits on board? Or three. Oh. Wait. Sometimes they have they that have like that porridge so. stuff sometimes. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, it is. I've had that. I think it's rice. I think sometimes. so too. And I, I can never tell what you're supposed to do to it. So I always make it like savory. I've made it savory as well. I think it could go either way. I think maybe that's the objective. I need the real deal grits. Who, who was talking about the uh, the peanutty pancakes yesterday? That was me. <laughs> oh, did we just did we determine whether they were peanut flavored pancakes? Nobody no. wanted to smell the pancakes. I surprisingly, ate the pancakes stop and smell the pancakes. Yeah, there was there was did a you? peanut smell that I kept getting. In it. Can we have a partial on this little floaty guy oh, here? Yeah. Oh. Can you turn lasers off? Please? Ooh. Yeah. Hey, floaty guy. Turn off the laser. Oh, there. sorry. Another oh. light came off, too. There we go. Ooh. Oh. Oh. That is so cool. That is neat. Oh, wow. Hot, Earth. Earth. Hmm. hot air balloon. It's a hot air balloon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gel. Deep sea. Like one of those little eat? snow globes. Yeah. Wow. It's like a heart. I don't know you what it is. You can push it a little tighter. It does look like a heart. What 